Good morning and welcome to the Sea View Stadium here in Belfast. This is the home of Crusaders Football Club and this morning we've got a lovely bright early start for you. It's a little bit chilly in the air, there's a slight wind, but it's wonderful conditions for a game of football in the Dansky Bank Northern Ireland Schools Cup Final for 2017. Both teams are here, there's a good crowd come from both schools and we had a quick chat with both coaches just beforehand. James, uh, coach for St Columns here today in the final. Um, the boys are pretty excited. Yeah, yeah, they were very excited. Well, actually, they were, they were in a good mood on the bus. I think they were focused and they were ready for it. We, we had a good chat with them last night and, and yesterday. So uh, I think it was more about preparing themselves mentally for today. You can see the pitch is absolutely perfect. I know it's going to be a tough game. So I'm good, glad to see they're getting in the zone. <laughs> There's a bit of a wind blowing across here towards us as we're stood like do you think that's going to affect like you, you guys play quite a good passing style don't you so you know are you going to try and keep it on the floor even more now with this win yeah i think today's about which team can out football the other team i think it's going to be a bit of a maybe a barcelona psg type game or a man city kind of game where the two teams really play good football and the wind yeah i think we'll, we'll get it we will get it down and play and i'm certain that they will i mean in this country you have to be used to this weather so <laughs> if we can play football in this weather we can play football in any weather absolutely but the pitch itself is absolutely outstanding isn't it like you know it, it just really helps for a passing team to be playing on a pitch like this with no bubbles and you know you can have a confidence in your first touch that's it i think because it's obviously the first one being played on st patrick's day and it is going out live it's going to be great for the spectators Do you know the ones that couldn't make it up today to actually see a quality game of football I dare say they don't believe that schools football can be a good quality and I, I think today both teams not just us will show that football can be played at this level. I think there's quite a lot of people around the country looking forward to it. I've seen quite a few tweets already saying you know two top teams going head to head so you know you must be excited personally yourself to see how the boys get, get on. Definitely you know we've we've had these boys since first year and they've been through a lot some of them have won numerous uh, Northern Ireland Cups some of them haven't really won as many as they wanted to and that's the challenge we've set for the boys today and it was a challenge at the start of the year you know are they up for it are they actually going to enjoy this occasion for what it is and don't fear making mistakes I think that's what it's about today just go out there and really enjoy the occasion great words to finish on thank you very much good luck no problem thank you Darren Tompkins coach here for Grosvenor um, you won it last year are you confident of a double? We're confident, um, but we're cautious. Um, we, we're very optimistic that the boys will do a really good job here. They'll, they'll always work very hard for us. Um, they're certainly up for it in the, in the dressing room. Um, but we're respectful of, of the team we're playing. You know, they're, they're coming a long way and they're not going to do that. Um, but they, you know, coming down with a, giving us a fight. So, yeah, we're confident, but cautious. Heard last year that Farnham was quite one-sided. There was a team that was quite defensive in that. Not yourselves, I must add. Today, I've seen quite a lot of stuff on Twitter already. You know, there's a feeling both teams are going to have a real go, good go at each other today. And you know, does that does that fill you with excitement for the match we're about to see? I hope so. I hope you know. At the end of the day, this is about the boys having a good time, having something memorable. And you know, a four-three must be more fun for the supporters <laughs> than you know than I want. So, yeah. Than I want, have, sure. Um, but. Uh, you know, we, uh, we're, we're optimistic for a good game. I mean, you know, we've no excuse, we've a good pitch down in front of us today, and the weather's not maybe perfect, but you know, it's not too warm. So, you know, the boys aren't going to you know, feel it that way. So, we're, we're optimistic, yeah, have a good game. Pitch is incredible, isn't it? And, you know, you've, you've played all the matches on grass. Here you are now playing on the 4G, and the wind is a little bit blustery, but if you are playing it on the ground, that is possibly not going to affect you so much, is it? No, absolutely. Well, our aim is to play the ball on the ground as much as we can, but I mean, it's, well, there's a bit of a wind, you know, the ball will, will yeah. take a bit of time in the air, but you know, we're, it's not going to it's not going to wreck it, you know, it's, it's fairly reasonable, so we want to get the ball down, but at the end of the day, this is about winning, you know, this is, so if I have to go in the air, we'll go in the air the day, yeah. you know. No, anything about the opposition, or is it really just all about yourselves and how you perform on the day? It's very much about how we perform, you know, if we, um, if we turn up and play like we can and put the effort in as I'm sure they will, I have no reason to fear anybody but again, you know, the, the, these boys are, you know, are well known for, for being just in good sides, they don't, you know, finish in all the underage finals for, for reasons, so, you know, if we win, we'll have to, you know, properly beat a half-decent team, you know. Well,
Well, certainly looking at the scores, you certainly know got a few guys who know where the back of the net is. So we might see some goals today, but good luck anyway and have a great day. Thank you very much. Well, that was a little bit early. Apologies, we had a couple of little clicks on our microphone there. But we, uh, we're getting ready. This is the team. Tim Lama, Lewis English, Daniel Martin, Michael Todorov, Lewis Cunningham, Daniel Lama, Stuart Nelson, Curtis Elliott, Josh Kelly, Matt Tumelson and Connor Kinahan are the starting 11 for Grosvenor. The defending champions here, Darren Tompkins is the manager. Apologies for running through this very quickly, but the teams came out a little bit too early there. We're not working to Champions League timings or anything like that. St. Columns College, based out of Derry, Gareth Muldoon in goal, Matthew Kirk, Dylan Mooney, Canal Fagan, Emmett McGilloway, Seamus Quinn is the captain, Ryan Doran, Jack Malone, Matty Doherty, Joe McCarty and Nathan McEnough are our starting eleven. James Green and Mark Tracy are the joint managers. One's the handsome one and one's the tactician, apparently, they tell me. Those are the list of substitutes. There will be five, up to five substitutes used in this match. The uh, referee just uh, tossing the coin there. We, uh, it is Peter Murray from Lisbon who is our referee and there's a pretty good crowd here pretty good atmosphere the uh, on the line is Kieran Coulter and Jason McCord and Paul Costello is our fourth official well I'm very pleased to say with me Diarmuid O'Carroll welcome Diarmuid I'm very good, thank you very much. Great to have you on board. Uh, you know quite a lot um, about Crusaders and this pitch, and you've played here many, many times. Did yes, you say a couple of hundred. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a great it's a great facility here. It's a perfect a perfect pitch for uh, a game this morning. Obviously, it's a wee bit wet and windy, but they, they're not worried about that with this surface. So uh, we should see a very good game. Well, off we go. We just had a slight uh, glitch with our picture there. Apologies for that. But we are straight back on with the action. They've just kicked off. And a good early tackle there. The ball from the crowd. It's fair to say they're a little bit fired up. This is a good start down the wing. Put out of play. Big expectation here on Grosvenor as well. Defending champion. So hopefully they can, they can live up to it. A wee bit of pressure locally. Grosvenor in blue and St. Colum in yellow. Grosvenor uh, won on penalties last year in a, uh, a very one-sided match and it's felt that today's match is going to be a little bit more open. Both teams are, are really going to have a, a bit of a go at each other. St. Columns have a huge history of producing players as well from from that region so hopefully we'll see a lot of talent on show as well and they'll push Grosvenor all the way yeah so first corner into the box couple of big lads in there winner of the header there by the number nine Josh Kelly and already first thing you notice few big lads here from the Grosvenor team and that corner was threatening wasn't it yeah great delivery by the number 10 as well and after a great start and you can see the commitment and, and the energy being shown by both teams already hopefully going to be a very good one here here's Mooney Mooney looks up goes inside completely takes his man out Stuart Nelson ends up on his backside you get a few on these pitch don't you like you know these players won't have played on this sort of 4G pitch before, will they, Dermot? No, and and they're gonna they're gonna naturally take a few minutes to get used to it, especially with a wee bit of rain this morning as well. It's gonna be it's gonna be a wee bit slippy at times for people if they if they turn too sharp. So they'll get used to it after a few minutes. They get it down and pass it around. They'll be nice and comfortable soon enough, I'm sure. Yes. Well, there's a fresh little wind blowing as you're looking at the pictures. The wind there's a bit of a wind blowing straight directly at us, and it's obviously caught that ball there as well. I think uh, they're playing with quite a light ball, and that goes out of play. For well, an old geezer like myself who didn't stop playing about 20 years ago, one of the things I found that's quite amazing is um, the, the light balls that these guys play with. We'll cut off that for a second. As 
Yeah, they're, they're, they're brilliant from a striking point of view when you have a go at a goal, but I'm not too sure the goalkeepers agree with that. <laughs> yeah. That's a striker's union coming out of me there. <laughs> nice football here from St. Colum. Beautiful interplay. And already Seamus Quinn, the, the captain, the number six. Really, look, look at him again. He's looking to link up. He looks to be an important player for St. Colum. Yeah, they seem to be trying to play the right way as well on the ground, trying to move it quick moving it short and move the ball around he seems to be pivotal in that sitting deep rule in the midfield yeah two real good footballing teams here and it's uh, it's great that they've come to play on a, on a pitch like this you were telling me earlier this is a, a brand new pitch they've they've had the 4G for a while and this is a brand new one yeah they had a 4G there for I think it was seven or eight years and it was it was a wee bit harder on the on the players so they, they relayed it in the summer it's now a very receptive pitch and I, I don't think anyone would have a problem Solid play there from Curtis Elliott, but cleared with uh, the wind. So the, there is a wind that's blowing uh, sort of a w from the far side of the pitch towards them, but it is slightly going left to right as well. You'll see the corner flags there uh, fluttering right to left. I said left to right. I meant right to left. Here's Nelson. He's already shown a couple of tricks, but he's struggling to keep his footing on, on this ground at the moment. And now St. Colum come away. Looking for the short ball, little interplay, lovely one-two. Here's McEnough. And that one into Rosette. Good play by Daniel Lammer. He wanted to lose that football nice and early. <laughs> yes, it's, it's fairly chilly. I think it's one of those days when you're playing, it's ideal conditions. But if you're watching, it's, yeah. it's not so good. <laughs> Where was the sunshine from yesterday? <laughs> Do you, you stop playing uh, this summer? Yeah. This last summer? Yeah. It's, um, uh, what have you been doing since then? Obviously, you know this pitch very well. Yeah, no, I, I still uh, I obviously played here with Crusaders for a couple of years and yeah. had a good successful run. And now I, uh, I oversee the Youth Academy here at Crusaders up into reserve level. So I'm here still two or three nights a week. They haven't got rid of me yet. So, <laughs> um, so no, I, I actually live very local to the ground as well. So I know the place very well. McCarty just managing to keep up ball in play. I think that was the first ball we've seen put up in the air. <laughs> and we're, we're what? We're four and a half. We're nearly five minutes into the match. And it's great and, to and see. And that's great to see, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's brilliant. Especially the, the stigma would be with local footballers that they would just get it up and get it at them. But as you've seen already, in particular, number six for St. Coleman's. He wants to get on the ball, wants to move it quickly. Yeah. Sometimes it's very interesting with tactics, though. Was, uh, I, was, uh, we, I covered the Super Cup here uh, with Real Sociedad. We'll just watch this. An attempted shot from distance just over the bar. And it was very interesting talking to the Real Sociedad coach who, who sort of said, well, look, everybody expects the Spanish teams to play on the ground and everything. But, you know, sometimes there's a time and a place for a ball up in the air. Yeah. And, it, and it's not a bad thing. No, and that was, uh, I actually, I was, I was at a one-on-one a, a -on -one thing with Gary Neville not too long ago down in Dublin. And he was the same. He said, you go expecting everyone to be Barcelona. But the majority of the league isn't. The majority of the league is closer to a, a lower half English team than they are to Barcelona. So yeah. there's a time and a place. And with a wind like this, there's no point in putting it up in the air. You may as well get it down on the ground and play. Yeah. Well, it's certainly been a good match so far. Both teams look to have settled in. A little bit of confusion between centre-half and right-back there. And uh, Lewis English just putting his... Uh, Lewis Cunningham in a slight bit of trouble here. But Grosvenor... Quickly turning that into a oh, beautiful pass inside. Again, St. Colum showing superb skills. Doherty. He might even have a pop from here. He Tell fancies it. Tries to chip. Unlucky. Unlucky. Tell yeah. you, that's great to see. They've passed through the thirds. As soon as they've got a look at goal, number eight had a go a few minutes ago. And now Doherty up top had a go. As soon as he sees the post, he wants to, he wants to make himself a hero. Nice and early, which is great to see from a striking point of view. Absolutely. Nil nil here. Really wonderful atmosphere. There's, uh, I think there's nearly a thousand kids around the place here, on all uh, all sides of the ground except the left hand side. That's cleared away by Fagan. Saint Columns really have settled in here. They've got the ball down. They've they started confidently. They're not afraid of the reigning champions in any way. No. That's a beautiful ball inside. Here come Grosvenor. Out to Nelson. Nelson. 
Nelson just missed Q in the shot. It's good. I think it's fair to say Stuart Nelson so far is, doesn't look as if he's comfortable with the pitch. He's been down on his backside a few times. There he miscued the shot totally. Yeah, I think that's it. And as I said, it does take it does take a few minutes to settle down, especially with the little bit of wet in the ground as well. Yeah. So when you played for Crusaders and you came out the first 20 minutes, you really did try and hit them hard because they were still getting used to the pitch. That's it. And it, it, you see it very quickly. People who aren't used to it maybe turn too quickly and they lose their footing. Uh, when you're a, a home player, you're used to it here. You definitely have a slight advantage early on. Yeah. Throw from Mooney. Mooney gets it back. And... Uh, McEnough was waiting, but the pass wasn't good there. It's looking very much like St. Column have got an extra man in midfield. And, uh, you know, they always seem to just have a spare man. I'm just looking at the formation. It seems to be um, Stuart Nelson at the minute for Grosvenor. He's talked to what wide right on his own almost. They've left him isolated. Oh, they've left him isolated. But... They are seem to be matching up. Columns are more of a 4-3-3 with Grosvenor slightly more defensive shape. I think at the minute to try and stifle the midfield threat. Yeah. Yeah, there but seems to be... A, it, you're pretty much playing a 4-2-4 almost. You're looking at the formation here. They really are pushing the men up, aren't they? Yeah. But they... It does mean that they get... And there you see a perfect example just getting outnumbered in midfield. And St. Colum. And that's now that there's a long ball, this is a good opportunity. Ryan Doran. Whew. Close, McCarthy was swinging at that one. And now Nelson, giving a bit of space. And that one nearly hits the commentators. Trying to hit in us. In fact, it's just right in front of us. There you go. That could have been nice. We've got some expensive equipment in front <laughs> of us here. You can see straight away they want to get the captain. They want to get um, Nel is it Nelson on the Nelson. ball. Yeah. Wide right. They want to get him on the ball as soon as possible. I've been quite impressed as well with number 11, Connor Curran in the midfield, looks very energetic. You saw there straight away, head up, looked to get Nelson on the ball early, so he must be the threat. Yes, Nelson does seem to be an important outman for, for Grosvenor. And at the moment, he's not firing yet, so here's St. Colum looking to slip the ball through, but that one's, yeah, that's that one's a, going to be too heavy. That's another example of the pitch there. On a grass pitch, something that might have maybe held up, but straight away on this pitch, that'll skip yeah. away. Yeah. And again, that's something they'll, they'll settle down, they'll get used to it, they'll, they'll get the speed of the pitch quick, quickly enough. And with the wind behind as well, there's no doubt that the, you know, the ball will just be taken away on this sort of pitch that's as it. well. And it, it's interesting, I'm almost sure St. Columns actually turned them around because the minute at the start, Grosvenor were, they had their, uh, the back to their own fans, and I think it was St. Columns won the toss and turned them around. So yeah. they must be thinking of an early start, get the wind and get the goal. Matty Doherty again, working hard. Relieves Lewis Cunningham of the ball. Throw to Grosvenor, right in the corner. Enjoyable uh, match so far. Already 10 minutes on the clock. It's absolutely whizzed by. We'll be, we're playing two halves of 40. No, no strikers have had a real opportunity yet. We just saw one header early on from a corner. And Jack Malone wins a corner for St. Colum, the first corner of the match for the team from Derry in yellow. And just looking, they're not pushing the centre half up here. He's staying back. Grosvenor just about got everybody back here. Look as if they're trying to swing it in with the wind. Header is won there by McCarty. And now a break. Connor Kernahan. And that's beautifully handled by Matthew Kirk, the right back. Good energy again from Conor in midfield. He seems to be, seems to be quite sharp, quite energetic, and it'll be interesting to see if he can be more powerful and, and effective later on in the game here. The throw goes a miss. St. Colum just cleared our lines. Tough one for the goalkeeper here with the wind against, but gets a good connection. Oh, that's an interesting <laughs> control. You don't, you can't teach that one from Quinn. I think it was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that that one might sting, but he's <laughs> it took it full in the face there. And 
Yes, I don't think the, the uh, St. Colin coach... No, actually, it just flicked off a Grosvenor player there, yep. and we get a corner. And after winning the header from the last one, this will be a threat again. Grosvenor need to be careful. I know you said they're a big physical side, but it all depends on how you attack the ball, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, they're not sending up... Uh, St. Colum are not sending up two of their taller players. Just looking at the back, the... Uh, two players hanging back they, uh, and there's the ball across the ground just to maybe prove it again another example of a player slipping as he played the ball they have a couple of big lads but they haven't sent up as you say they haven't sent up all of them they have a couple no. of bigger lads oh great ball in that's a quality ball and Cunningham did really well to get behind that I just wonder if an attempted left foot shot there just wonder if a couple of the big lads were in they might have put a bit of pressure on yeah but uh Interesting from Doherty. He seems to just be keen to have the shot off. That's him now, right and left. He's had two goals already. As a striker, nothing wrong with that. Trying to get your trying to get your distance, trying to get your marks early on. Well, I hope you're enjoying the coverage here on uh, Northern Ireland Schools FA School, uh, Danske Bank Cup Final here on the uh, Northern Ireland Schools Football YouTube channel. Nice to see a bit of friendly banter for the goalie there. Yeah. I don't think the Grosvenor ones will let him away with any, any mistakes here first half. <laughs> but as you say, it's great to see so many out, so many committing to it and coming and watching it on such a yeah. such a big day for the lads here. That's a wonderful ball. Now from McInef looking for the fullback to overflow. Comes inside. Dylan Mooney made a bit of space of him there. Mooney still looking for the ball. Comes back to Seamus Quinn, the captain. He just seems to be a... Seems to be pretty much a play baker, but he's dropped back a bit, but now he's moving into the box. This is the sort of move that St. Colin would want to do. Lovely little step over there. And the shot, slightly miss hit. Goalkeeper wasn't expecting that, and in the end... As you say, everything, everything is coming through Quinn midfield. He seems to be the one starting it, and there he's trying to even get on the end of it. He played a fantastic crossfield pass to start the attack. He moved into it, got on the ball, and he was able to get himself in the box afterwards as well. Just got a player down at the moment. I think that's young Con Connor Cunningham. And maybe I've jinxed him here saying he was so energetic early on. Yeah. So the thing is, there is quite a strong wind that's uh, going from right to left. And, you know, if you do, like, you know, Dermot, if you're a footballing team, you like to play the ball on the ground. Is, is, it, is it true, really, that a footballers really would rather play into the wind a little bit and have the ball sort of hugging their feet more than having to play with the wind behind and constantly chasing? It can be, because sometimes when you, when you have such a strong breeze with you, you actually overplay the ball quite a bit or you look to get in behind them too quickly. See, when you're against the wind, you know you have to pass it. You have to go to feet, you have to move the ball. And that actually, yes, it brings a pressure, but it also brings a comfort if you're comfortable with the ball at your feet. Um, sometimes when, as I say, playing down left here now, St. Columns, it'd be easy for them just to try and lump it in behind and use the, use the legs and use the wind, but they don't want to do that. They want to get the ball down play. So it'll be interesting to see how they do it in the second half as well. Well, he's just coming off uh, here, but it looks as if he, he will be rejoining us. It doesn't look too bad. I can't see a substitute warming up. So Colum with their third corner of the match. And the wind it seems to be quite strong. It's quite blustery out on that pitch, isn't it? It, it seems to be kind of swirling around. It doesn't yeah. even necessarily seem to be in one direction. Yeah, like, it actually seems to be fairly calm where we are at the moment. Again, it's along the ground. Oh, Appeal for handball there, but I don't think that could be given. Here's a long-distance shot. Jack Malone there, trying it with a side foot. Yes, they'll be disappointed. A couple of big lads up for the corner. That's the second one in a row now. It's Skittlin on the ground, so he's, he's going to need to improve that going forward. So still 0-0. A very enjoyable game so far. Connell Fagan plays it inside. Emmett McGilloway loses out, but somehow, a bit of luck, and Matthew Kirk comes away. He looks a good player, young Kirk. He's put a few good balls in the box, and he's done well going forward. And Kirk, Kirk now in the middle of the pitch. Modern, modern right back there, going into the middle of the pitch, wants to score himself a goal. <laughs> yeah, everybody plays everywhere these days. 
<laughs> yeah, gone, gone are the days of Gary Neville going up and down a straight line. <laughs> nice throw inside. St. Colum. Yeah, the ball, uh, the bounce certainly uh, putting him off there. And now Grosvenor. It's fair to say there's been a lot more play on the left hand side than the right in the last 10 minutes. Oh, great here first comes touch. Kelly. Beautiful touch. Good play. He's been starved so far of, of delivery, but it just shows you the little bit of quality he has there. Good defending to stop him, but he's got his team up the pitch well. Yeah, there's no doubt at the moment the tempo of the matches is with St. Column. And again, the throw goes straight to a yellow head and St. Column can clear the lines and they go long. Just one man up alone there for St. Colum, Joe McCarty. And that was enough to get the throw. I think Cunningham could have went back to his goalkeeper there and kept it. Maybe a wee bit nervy. Obviously a big occasion here, but if he'd gone back to the goalkeeper, they maybe could have got out. I know, it's a difficult situation, isn't it? If you, you know, you, you could try and play it back, but oh, that's it. You know, you, you're so you could easily underhit it. There's so many things that could go wrong sometimes. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm being harsh on him here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lovely swinging cross into the box. Flag up. And uh, yeah, flag up for offside as the cross came in. Again, good work from the right back. Again, showing he has that bit of quality. Cutting back on his left and putting it in. Good delivery on both feet so far. Well, that was that's noticeable, isn't it? That was his left foot. And usually, you, you know, some teams struggle to find a player to play left back with his left foot. And you've got a right back there who's got a left foot to swing in. And that's it. It shows you the quality now in every position. You need to, you need to have that in the modern game to play full back. Lovely fit flick on there from Kelly. Here comes Nelson, heads it straight forward for Kernahan. Grosvenor, little chip over the top. Nobody really looking for the ball there for Grosvenor, but St. Colum have to clear. Grosvenor have been a lot more direct here, so it, it, it'd be interesting. It, it does seem like a slight clash of uh, styles. Grosvenor a bit more, a bit more direct, trying to hit the channels, get them turned, while St. Colum's are pretty much to feet and trying to move the ball as, as much as possible. Another corner, second corner of the match for Grosvenor. Now, last time, this was probably Grosvenor's best chance in the match. It was uh, They put a lot of their big guys in, and noticeably, number 10 also now, Joe McCarty, who's quite a tall lad, has been asked to go back for St. Column. It was a threatening possibility. Here we go. Keepers coming. Keepers all at sea. Ball is loose. The goalkeeper's down at the moment. He is uh, holding his face, but he's up. That's a missed clearance. And the referee will blow for the foul. Well, the goalkeeper, uh, well, you were a striker, so you're not going to have any <laughs> of this. <laughs> no, I, I think the keeper was eager to come and deal with it, but he just got caught under the flight of the ball. I think it was maybe the wind yeah. got away from him. Yes, he takes a heavy, a heavy dunt, but I, I don't necessarily think the attacker did anything, anything wrong. But as you say, no. maybe I'm biased. Well, as an ex-keeper myself, having had many discussions oh. with referees, the key thing is, is the goalkeeper going to get the ball? And I think you're right, he completely misjudged it from the first minute. And that's the thing, I um, think he did well in fairness. He obviously took a heavy bang, got himself back up, got settled until the, the game stopped, and then he was able to take a couple of seconds and get himself back right again. Yeah. Now, I think the referee made a good call there. Keeper kicks long, Muldoon, and straight through to the other goalkeeper. Again there for, the, for the, the free kick from the goalkeeper, you could see the number eight in midfield for St. Columns. It wasn't Quinn this time, dropping off, almost demanding it off him yeah. and upset when he was going longer. They want the ball to feet and they want to move it. Well, if you're the coach of Grosvenor, that's two corner kicks and that's nearly two goals. And those, are, those have been really, you know, when they're playing football, when they're playing in normal play, St. Columns look to be very uh, comfortable. Yeah, and you, can't, you don't win a game on possession. So the Grosvenor, the Grosvenor boys would be very encouraged that when they have got the ball in the right areas, then there's been good chances. That was a sore one there for number eight, St. Columns. There's a man down there, rolling in agony here, Jack Malone, who seems to have... Uh, uh, I think he's going to live. Yeah, he seems he's to uh, be a good actor. Maybe he does uh, <laughs> drama or something in school here, because <laughs> as he, soon looked, as he looked like he was dying. I was awfully worried about him there. Yeah. Now he seems to be up tying his laces, so fair play to him. Yeah. I think as an as soon a, as he a heard star in drama here for A-level or something he's going to get. As soon as he heard the whistle, whistle blow, that was it, he was okay. Okay, well, 
going to have a drop ball here. St. Collins would be so nice here and shell the ball 60 yards away from where they were back to the goal kick. <laughs> Fair play to them. Yeah, probably put it out for a goal kick. That'll do. There you go. That's so nice of them, isn't it? Watch the bounce. Watch the bounce. Oh, oh he's a brave goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah, he's a brave lad. OK, here we go again. Grosvenor with the ball. Have to go back to the keeper. Long distance clearance from Tim Lama. So one of the lovely things of these pitches, you can hit the ball first time so easily. Muldoon with the kick. Just have a little spell of a couple of long balls here, but back to tie. McKinneff, and that ball's just a little bit too wide. Unlucky again, looking to do the right thing, spread the ball away, just maybe got away from the bit. Twenty-three minutes on the clock. Nil-nil. Probably a couple of half chances have gone to Grosvenor. Although you've got to say that St. Colin probably, in terms of open play, have really been the team on top. Yeah, St. Colin's have definitely been more comfortable on the ball. But as I say, possession doesn't win you anything in these games. The, <laughs> probably the better chances have come from the set pieces of uh, of Grosvenor. Here's Malone. Lovely touch inside. Oh, a little, a little bit trick. of a mess up from a Doherty. A little trick there from Doherty. I think that yeah. must be a, a new skill. I haven't seen that one before. Oh, a lovely little overlap, but that's cut out by Mooney. And then the referee is going to blow for this. Colonel Fagan not too happy. A big boy like him should be able to take a bang like that as well. <laughs> Turnhand's only small as well. Connell Fagan. First yellow Get, of the game too. Getting a little bit, bit upset, yeah. Yellow card for Connor Kernahan. Number 11, who's actually a son of one of the coaches here. Oh, very good. As well. Yeah. And I think it was Fagan's reaction more than anything else. And see, to be honest, uh, yes, he was late and he sent him up in the air a wee bit, but it wasn't necessarily a, a nasty tackle or a dangerous tackle. No. So you don't like to see people get booked too easy in these kind of games. Bit of a dangerous ball back there, but McGilloway managed to clear. And now they switch left again. Here's Dylan Mooney. Comfortable on both wings. That's the lovely thing with St. Colum. They pass it backwards. Here's Connell Fagan inside. That's great for Malone. Now on to Doherty. And Doherty just gets crowded out of it. St. Colum win the ball back. Here's Doherty again. Lovely interplay, onside, Ref Larinson says continue, great, lovely play. Great football, one side to the other, through everybody in midfield, interchanging the two or three in midfield, Malone and Quinn in particular, just interchanging, one's dropping deep, one's going long, and there you see Doherty up top as the, as the focal point as well, they're very unlucky. Yes, that was wonderful to watch, goalkeeper's got way under this. Straight into uh, the stand, a few more... Uh, Another busload has just turned up from one of the schools by the looks of it. We were due to have two finals here today. Unfortunately, one of them uh, has been called off. And one of the teams not able to make. So we've uh, just got the under-18 match. Lovely playing again from Quinn. Certainly St. Colum loads of space in midfield for them. There's no doubt about it. And that's that's been the big difference so far. The six and eight, Malone and uh, Quinn for St. Columns, they've been very, very effective. They've been running the show for them in there, but as I say, they maybe haven't created as much. They've looked very, very pretty, but they haven't created as many hard hardcore chances so far. Yeah. A little bit of a fortunate free kick, I think, there. But uh, Kernahan went down. I think the centre-half, uh, McGilloway, actually won the head to fair and square. Matt Tumilson with the free kick. Looks to play it long, and the referee just sees an off-the-ball nudge and gives St. Colum the free kick. Still very much feeling each other out here, aren't they? So it's it's been uh, it's been has, definitely has been a clash of sty uh, style so far. But hopefully we get a, a few more hardcore chances in open play here soon. Great play by Malone here, driving with the ball. Yeah. Here is McInef again inside. Oh, great ball. Oh, that's a lovely ball, and that's awkward. You can see the bit of quality 
Malone again, I know we seem to be repeating ourselves, but Malone again, first of all, he drove down the wing, then he got his head up and he could see the pass. It wasn't quite there, but he saw the pass. That's half the, half the battle at this age group. Yeah, lovely to see so many good ball players here. Mooney wins the header, throw to Grosvenor. Well, there was quite a bit of excitement on social media before this match, saying that uh, obviously Grosvenor had a, a, a bit of a sort of tough game last year in that they, they played against a team who really didn't c come to play. They, they, put the, they put the bus up, as Mourinho would ah. say. And uh, it was nil-nil after extra time, went to penalties. And it was one of the things that I noticed on social media is both teams were saying, look, we're, we're going to really have a good go at this. And that's, and, that's, and that's what it's how all it's about. Out. Yeah, that's what, you, that's what you want. In any final, it doesn't matter what level, doesn't matter if it's schools or club. You want them to go and enjoy themselves and go and play. You can't be afraid to concede. You have to go and play and try and enjoy it. And that's exactly what both teams have done so far. Malone, back out to McEnough again. Looking so comfortable, this mid midfield, McInef, Malone, Quinn, all three of them, just play interplay between them has been superb. It's been brilliant, as you say, it's been very much shaded down the left side here for St. Combs, or St. Columns, but um, but that's probably due to the wind as well. Yeah. It's obviously blowing down this way naturally, the players ended up coming down this way a bit more comfortably. The, pre the goalkeeper for Grosvenor under pressure was kicking, but that'll obviously flip around this in the second half. I can't see this wind dying down anytime soon. Yeah, it's a little bit of a nightmare. I think the wind has just strengthened a little bit out there, and certainly um, Tim Lama, the goalkeeper for Grosvenor, having difficulties with the ball out of hand. Oh, that's unlucky there. Good tackle from Curtis Elliott, I thought, but... Again, again, Doherty dropping off into pockets, trying to get on the ball. He looks a talent. Doherty Malone. Doherty might even have a pop here. Plays a lovely ball outside of the foot, inside. And that was Connell Fagan, who's uh, up from the back. That's it, a centre half showing he has a bit of ability over his back to goal. Great to see. If that had gone in, I'm sure he'd have told everyone about it forevermore. <laughs> well, if a centre half's doing little tricks like that, a little flick up and going for the half volley into the corner, that's, uh, that's not bad at all. St. Paul, I'm certainly on top here in this Danske Bank Schools Cup final. Held at uh, Seaview, home of Crusaders Football Club. Again, considering the breeze, considering the wind, and also considering St. Col St. Columns have settled quite well, I think Grosvenor, if they go in at half time, nothing each, they'll be very, very pleased because the pressure will be on St. Columns to play with against this wind in the second half. Yeah. That's the wonderful thing with football, isn't it? Second half's going to be totally different. That's it. I sound like a typical commentator here. Game of two halves, but. I do think with a win like this and a wee bit of nerves at the start, you, you might see a completely different Grosvenor team in the second half. Chance here. Oh, what a ball from Kernahan. Here's Nelson. Nelson has got looks up, but he's closed down well. And Dylan Mooney, the number three, you've got to give a mention for this man. He's involved in just about every attack for Sir Colum. And yet, he's also got their, their go-to guy for, for Grosvenor to handle. Yes, 100%. He's kept him very quiet so far, which has been impressive. Oh, what an effort. Oh, oh good, good strike. Good attempt there from Josh Kelly. Hit it early. A big Josh. He's obviously been he's been starved of play so far, but what he has had, he's shown that little bit of quality there again. Got it on his feet well. Had a, had a look up, and maybe the wind against him didn't help him. If he had the wind behind him, it might have travelled the extra couple of yards and beat the goalkeeper. Yeah, you'd appreciate that from a strikers union, wouldn't you? Yeah, like uh, that's it. just hitting it a little bit early, maybe before the goalkeeper's even settled. And that's it. And, and obviously the goalkeeper for St. Combs hasn't had that much to do. So you're, you're hoping that maybe you catch him cold, catch him early, and he wouldn't be ready. Yeah. It's a good play from Josh. Match certainly starting to warm up. 30 minutes to go. Last 10 minutes in this first half. Oh, there's a free man here in the box. Oh, that was the fullback coming through. Matthew Kirk and Matty Doherty. He was totally, he could have actually put a foot on that and, and controlled it. Great play again, though. Doherty dropping into the hole on the half turn, looking straight away and seeing the run. Again, it's all about the quality of seeing the run, trying to pick it out. Yeah. Kirk did brilliant, modern fullback, cutting in. And yes, he could have done better, but do you know what? At least he got himself in the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, went for the first time hit and he, he possibly just didn't realise that he actually had time to put a touch on it and, and settle himself. But I think definitely it's a case here for Grosvenor to dig in, get to half time, don't concede, and then regroup and rebuild for the second half. Here's Mooney. 
Conal Fagan. Oh. oh, and he's he's taken out there by Stuart Nelson. Oh, that must be a foul. Surely no foul. Nothing given. We've been we've been praising Quinn for his passing and his movement all game, but I think that's a wee bit of a late tackle there. Yeah, and I think uh, he's lucky to get away with it. St. Colum clear. Go long. Oh, beautiful Good skills. Play. Good play, so, Mackinoff. Brilliant. Little little moments like that. Nathan Mackinoff made that look so easy. Referee says play on. <laughs> Well, Josh Kelly not very happy there, making it very clear to the official that that was handball. I think the official was saying that it was totally accidental, which it looked like. Maybe that was an official matching up. One for you, one for after <laughs> Quinn getting away with the tackle. Maybe just thinking, you know what, we'll let that one run there. Yeah, yeah. Here's Doherty again. Good, strong tackle there by the captain. Stuart Nelson getting a strong tackle in there for Grosvenor. Here's Mooney. Plays it straight into Nelson. Oh, a bit of miscommunication here. Well, they've been playing together all season. You think the two centre halves know what that sign means now? Yeah. <laughs> it's just just the occasion, isn't it? Like sometimes you know big moments like this is just got a man down in front of us actually. But again, great to see the centre halves. Even though there was a bit of confusion, yes, but. He got it to the left and he didn't look to just shell it up the pitch. He looked to keep playing. He looked to get it down the line to Malone and get him on the ball again. Yeah. Uh, Malone took a little late one of the Achilles. Sore one, but I'm sure he'll get up and he'll be okay. Well, you can have nil-nils that are as boring as anything. This has certainly not been boring. It's been thoroughly enjoyable. Neither keeper's really made a save yet. But... Uh, there's just that bubble. You always feel there's something about to kick off here, and we've seen some great football, great interplay from both teams. The quality has been there, maybe just not in the final third. Last pass, last shot, probably has been lacking, but the quality in midfield and from the back has been fantastic. St. Colin come forward again. Here's. And that was uh, Ryan Doran. You have to feel bad for Ryan Doran, he's been a wee bit starved of played on the right side, but you can see there, even cutting in off the right side, he, he has yeah. the quality and he can be a threat here with Kirk down from right back. Here's Doran and Kirk again, into play, good ball into Kirk. Kirk crosses in, Dorsey's looking for it. Chance, Malone. Here's an opportunity. Oh. And a desperate last-ditch tackle there. Jack Malone was uh, pulling the trigger. He maybe waited too long, he thought he had an extra couple of seconds, probably should have just let go. It went on to probably his, his yeah. less favourite foot of left, but have a go from that kind of distance. You don't shoot, you don't score. Yeah, you're absolutely right there, we've not seen a lot from uh, Ryan Duran at all. St. Colum have typically played down the left-hand side. But it was nice to see the interchange, he has been starved to play, but him and Kirk down the right side again, a real threat. And we've seen loads of nice play from Mackin on this side, but... We haven't seen as much threat at goal. Kirk on the other side, he's put in two or three great balls now with both feet, so it's great to see. Five minutes to go in this first half. Grosvenor, Grammar School nil. St. Colum nil. Long ball in. Almost a free header there for Daniel Lama. The Grosvenor support trying to drive their team on here, and they obviously. They're not, maybe not expecting them to be on the back foot as much, but this is a, it's a very strong breeze, and St. Columns have done very well. They've settled in well. Seamus Quinn. Brilliant play again. McEniff. What a ball. Nathan McEniff. Mooney's coming up on the outside. McEniff steps in, but doesn't deliver with it. the right foot there. I think that's been the difference. They've been in these fantastic areas. Just that little bit of quality at the end. The, little, the last choice. I think he's gone for a shot there when possibly should just get, a, get his head up and get the ball in the box. Great Doherty. play by Doherty. Great skills from Doc in there. Oh, <laughs> another day he could have appealed for the penalty on that one. I know he was very, very honest. He didn't even appeal. I thought maybe there was a question mark there again. Strikers Union. I would have been claiming for a penalty. <laughs> Connor Kernahan gets ripped of the ball. Looks at the referee. He's not going to get anything near. There's Young Kirk again, showing his quality from right back. And McNeff, solid tackle from Lewis English, and a throw. Yeah, I think uh, on another day, you know, that's the sort of situation. He just touched the ball away, the defender took his legs. And I think uh, the fact that there wasn't even an appeal made, um, 
You'd I'm have been all over that one. I was very you? surprised that anyone who's seen me play would know I'd have been all over that. Being, <laughs> being accused of being a diver in my time, but there was definitely contact. I think anywhere else, in all seriousness, anywhere else in the pitch, I think that was possibly a free. He's yeah. played advantage, yes, but they didn't really get an advantage. And if they could have it back and see it back in a replay, I'm sure they'd look at it and think we had a chance there. Absolutely. Final few minutes here. Oh, bit of a mess. A little trick there. We call that the wind. Referee's been a little bit kind. He could have even called that an attempted throw, but you'll let him have another go. Crowd are getting a bit boisterous, trying to keep themselves warm. It is cold here, I will say that. Lovely interplay again. Makinev just losing the ball. Malone trying to go down the left side, but just too many players in the way. And that's a wonderful clearance. Josh Kelly doing well. Again, he's been starved, but he held the ball up well. Though. He was aware, up on his own, and he's kept the ball and got his team up, up the pitch. Nelson, man spare inside. Bit rare, bit of space here for Todorov. We've not seen a lot of him in this match. And then Daniel Lama plays the ball straight out of play. That is more encouraging from Grosvenor. At least they got it down. They passed it. They held it up, and they played it through midfield. Yes, a little bit of quality, and they let them down. But that's what they need to do. They need to get on the ball more if they want to influence this. Grosvenor, lovely interplay here. Uh, St. Column, two players collide into each other, clearing that. Carnahan, good energy again, getting past Kelly. That definitely is a threat for them. If they can get the ball into Kelly, he seems to be a threat. He seems to be hard to deal with for the two centre halves. Daniel Martin just loses the ball there, and Great here's an ball. opportunity. What a ball that is. Matty Darty now. He's got two players against him, though. Just couldn't get it under control. McInef. McInef is crowded out there. Lewis English. And here's Nelson. Good decision, referee. Good decision. He tried to let him play, let, tried to let him run. First time in the game, Nelson's had a real chance to open his legs. They took him out early. Doherty took a heavy bang a couple of seconds ago midfield, and it looks like he, he needed the extra couple of seconds there to just get himself right. Um, St. Combs will be worried about him because he's been a bit of quality for them all day. If you're the coach here, there's been a fair few times where the big ball up has actually caused trouble for St. Column. Now, with the wind behind you, if you're going in at half-time, are you, are you going to be saying, look, let, let's put a few more bigger balls in? I know it's not our noble style of play, but we're actually causing trouble with I that. I think Grosvenor will have, they'll have to go in positive. They'll have to say every time we've put it in there, like just now. Oh, here's oh. a chance. Confusion at the back and over the bar. Exactly. That's a, a case in point right there. Every time they've put it in, they've had a lot of joy. And the whistle has gone for half time. And the Grosvenor fans behind that goal give their team a bit of a send off there. There's no doubt that that finish has certainly boosted them a little bit. And well, that was perfect time. This is why we're analysts. We know that's what we're it. talking about here. But in theory, we know what we're doing anyway. <laughs> but uh, no, I definitely, you can see, and if you're a Grosvenor coach, you're going to be sitting there going, yes, we haven't had as much possession as we wanted. Yes, they've done rightly. But you're going to be looking at the positives. Every time they put the ball in the box, whether it be from a corner or a throw in, uh, a free kick from deep, they've been threat, they've had three headers and they've had second balls, so if they can do that again with the breeze behind them in the second half, it could be a completely different game. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the second half. Great words from David O'Carroll here, former Crusaders player, and uh, we're going to have a bit of entertainment by the looks of it. We're going to have a little break, just give our voice a rest and try and find something hot to pour down our necks because it's quite cold here. We'll be back for the second half very shortly.
for the race. So welcome back. The great news is that Diamond got the coffees. We're Don't. all suitably refreshed and we already see a substitute here. Number 16 for St. Column is on. As the conditions around us have worsened, there's no doubt about that. There's the, 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 the rain is really starting to pour down quite heavily. Um, have you been to see who actually has gone off, Dermot? Yes, we're off here. Um, I think that was, I think, number 16, which is uh, Stephen Bullock. I think yeah. he's actually come on for young Ryan Doran. Remember we said he was starved of the ball in the first half? Yeah. On the right wing. The number so, seven. Yeah, they've obviously mixed it up and just thought we get a bit of fresh legs on, might get a bit more joy in the second half. Yeah. But yeah, the, the conditions have definitely taken a turn for the worse here. Um, I think the wind has actually got stronger and the rain's come on, so it'll be interesting to see who reacts better. Yeah, it certainly is. It's, uh, it's stronger. There's definitely quite heavy rain out there now. Now, these sort of pitches, how do they, when the rain starts coming down, how, do, how does it affect the pitch? You know, does the ball just slide a lot more on here? Uh, they can they can be quite slippy, both for the ball and also for for the men themselves. But also, these pitches actually need a wee bit of watering sometimes. So you'd see, I've seen many stadiums like this before actually water their pitch before they play. Right. It doesn't. It, they don't need it for any reason. It's so that the ball is slick across it and it actually moves. So some of these players might actually prefer it. Well, it's definitely. Uh yeah, the ball's actually been blown around here. I, uh, of course, I'm, there isn't, there isn't a, well, you can't actually create a divot here, can you? I don't, no. What, what, oh, go on, Dermot. What happens when the wind is so strong you can't actually hold the ball? Do you, do you actually get a player to hold it? I think you just have to keep trying and trying, and then <laughs> eventually, if it got to that stage, you'd have to hold it. But have to go and hold it, yeah. I think there's a bit, of, a bit of wiggle room with the referee that he can just say, right, if it moves ever so slightly, as long as they're happy to go and, to go yeah. and hit it, yeah. so you'd need to be happy. You'd be there all day otherwise. St. Column again, lovely little skills on the wing. That's uh, Doherty again, showing what a live wire he is up front for St. Columns. That's it, you can see the quality they have. Um, Grosvenor have done brilliant so far. They've, they've, withstood, they've withstood it, but it'll be interesting to see now with Grosvenor with a bit of a bit of positivity at the break by their management team and, and hopefully they'll, they'll come back out and, and give it a real game here in the second half. We've been, we've been very complimentary about St. Columns, but it's still nothing each. It's still no, no goals, so um, it's all still to play for. Yes, Conor Fagan here. We had a little discussion at half-time, which uh, was pretty much uh, when I did the interview with the, the coach for Grosvenor, who's very um, positive about how they love to play the ball on the ground. And we were just debating whether, you know, whether at some stage you actually go, hold on a minute, maybe, maybe we do go to plan B and maybe we do try something because they don't look as good in the air as, uh, as our guys do. Yeah, they'll have to be looking at it. Grosvenor will have to sit there at, at halftime and think, do you know what, I know we want to play, we want to, we want to play the right way. And as we discussed in the first half, it's like the, the misconception about Spanish teams. Yeah. If you're having good joy doing something else, that's not your maybe your ABC usually. You have to go and do it. Uh, yeah. And every time they put the ball in the air, put the ball in the box, they've had joy. So I think Grosvenor will definitely be looking at their set pieces here second half. Tim Lama with the long ball. And there's no doubt Grosvenor, so far, they've played a few long balls and they've just ran out. And lovely skills from Kirk. Oh, my goodness. I'm a big fan of Kirk, I must say. From what I've seen of him, I also hear he's in the inter international setup as well with Northern Ireland. So it's great to see that he's getting acknowledged for his quality. Yes, yeah. you mentioned earlier, he plays actually in midfield for the international team. And I think I, think I, I said at the time, that, that must show that, you know, this is the, sc this is the school college team. And they've put him at right back, so they must be really happy with their midfield. Yeah, it shows you the quality, and we, and we have been very complimentary about the likes of um, Malone and Quinn so far in midfield. But it also shows you the kind of style they want to play. We've talked about the marauding fullback, and that's by putting one of their best players, arguably in the group, playing it right back. Yeah. Big kick. Here's an opportunity. This is a chance to grow. The keeper's coming out. Ball's loose. Oh, and it's a goal! That's Connor Kernahan! Who's headed the ball into the back of the net? A bit of a deflection from the goalkeeper. Great work originally by Kelly. He moved it right. Nelson one on one. The deflection is nice for Kernan and he heads home. I got worried for the little man that he might head it wide, but he did brilliant. And that just shows you 
possession and passing and looking pretty doesn't get you anywhere in the game. You have to put the ball in the net and Grosvenor have shown why they're champions, why they're reigning champions and they've scored again. Grosvenor take the lead and interestingly, as I think we're winning our money here as expert and analysts as well because that was a long ball from the goalkeeper that caused trouble at the back for St. Colum. They couldn't clear. That's and it. That's it, and I'll have to clip it back because I think I said that Curran was a real threat from midfield. <laughs> I'm almost sure. Yeah. Maybe we do know what we're talking about maybe, after maybe, all. Yeah, maybe we've got half a clue after all. Uh, only but, half a clue. <laughs> but a long ball from a goalkeeper caused chaos at the back for St. Colum. And then it was, a, it was a beautiful ball out to the right and keeper came out, but the deflection and the, the ball ricocheted and... Well, to be honest, Kernahan, he's not the tallest on the pitch. I think he had to stretch those neck muscles a little bit. It, it was one of those that it just got onto his head. It could easily have missed him. That's it. And, and you're seeing now already they've had a little kick, a bit of enthusiasm for it. They've got the wind behind their back here as well, so they might actually kick on and, and try yeah. and push on and get a second here. Yeah. That's certainly wind strong, but balls high to the box oh, and the keeper takes take. it beautifully there. Great hands under pressure from the, the big lad coming in behind them. That's a great take under, under pressure. Gareth Muldoon. And now St. Colum have oh, to fantastic. do some most beautiful skills. Young Doherty, brilliant skill. It'll be interesting to see now if St. Colum's, if they abandon their passing style, if they go a bit more direct. Obviously the conditions are, are pretty hideous at the minute now with the wind and rain, but you'd like to see them keep playing and they will get their chances, they'll yet to come. Yeah, there's a loose pass there. Doherty's looking to get in on it. That was a good shot from the centre half there, Grosvenor. 60 yard shot. But well, there's no doubt that uh, <laughs> Grosvenor now will be hugely buoyed. Like, to be fair, even though St. Colum have had the majority of the game, you're looking at chances and half chances, they've all been Grosvenor. Yeah, and even now, it's probably the style of play that St. Columns are doing. They're trying their best to play out, they're trying to pass out, and you see that with some of the top teams, even in the Premier League. You try and play out, sometimes players make mistakes and it gives the opposition that, that chances. And in fairness to Grosvenor, they had their chance, their one big chance and they've taken it. And that's what it's all about, goals win games. Absolutely. So Colum still looking to play through midfield, short, short kick. Jack Malone. And the wind certainly seems to be causing a few issues for St. Colum there. Tried to clear it from, from the back. And I think... Uh, yeah, there's a few few players calling back to the goalkeeper there, wanting uh, they wanted to play it short from the goal kick rather than longer. That's it. It's great to see the young players demanding the ball. They're not afraid to have it. It's a big stage for them. Bit of a crowd here, but they want the ball. They're demanding the ball. Yeah. They don't want the goalkeeper just to shell it up the pitch and get away with it. Josh Kelly. There's uh, Curtis Elliott. It was Kelly who played uh, that superb ball that led to the goal. He looked up, saw the opportunity. Nelson already been more influential in the second half. First half, they'll have been disappointed he had to spend his time defending. Already had a hand on the goal, and now he's a threat going forward again. You see the, uh, the motorway behind us. The M2, M3 split into the city centre. That's a lovely ball forward. Here's Doherty, he's pretty much on his own note, but there's plenty of support coming up. St. Colum really do have players in the box here. Oh, great and ball. that's a beautiful ball. What a ball. Penalty, surely. That will be a penalty. Fantastic ball. That bit of quality again from Doherty. Drifts out to the left. He wants the penalty straight in, hands on it. And he's the man who wants to be the hero here. Big pressure, though, in front of a big, hostile Grosvenor crowd. Can he do the business? Well, Joe McCarthy there. What a ball that was from Doherty, though. Completely cut the defence in half. Brilliant. And as you said, he was on his own originally, so the, the awareness and the, the experience and maturity to hold it up, get his head up, and then he saw the run and a little reverse pass into, the, into, the, into his path and there was nothing the goalkeeper could do. He either had to let him go past or let him take him down. So Doherty with the penalty. All the Grosvenor fans are behind the goal, doing whatever they can to put him off. Needs a cool head on this shoulders. And he scored! Doherty scores! And you've got to say that's truly a deserved goal. Yeah, and, and cool as you like, he didn't even think to himself, do you know what, I'm under pressure here, I'm just going to put my foot through it and shell it. He took his time, he watched the goalkeeper and he passed it on the other side. That's a real bit of class, which he's shown throughout the game. Game on. St. Colum equalise. A few... Uh, 
calm down motions from uh, from Josh Kelly there. Just when you felt that Grosvenor actually taken a stranglehold of the match. Yeah, and, <laughs> and in fairness, the best thing about St. Combs is they've stuck to what they were good at. They played the ball, they played it through the thirds, they got it into Doherty. He was on the half turn and a fantastic bit of quality to put his, his mate in yeah. and there was nothing else to do but take him down for the penalty. Yeah. And that was uh, quite similar, actually, to something we said in the first half, that teams who play the ball, you know, they actually, sometimes it's an advantage to play into the wind because the wind holds the ball up for you a little bit. And that's exactly what happened there. Yeah, 100%. And we were just saying about the players demanding the ball for St. Columns. They didn't want their goalkeeper simply to shell it. And the wind wouldn't work. Here's Doherty again. Great pressure, oh. great work. Look at this. He's completely gone past his man there. And just a little bit of bad control. Oh, late tackle, free kick. Yeah. Good play again from Quinn. You can see Grosvenor getting a little bit frustrated now, but they need to remember they're not keeping the ball as well as they could, but they're still in this game. They were yeah. winning there, and now they're one each, and there's a lot, lot of time to go here, another half an hour. So they need to relax, not get too down on themselves, get closer to them and get going again. What was really noticeable about that move, that actually won the penalty as well. I don't know if you saw, but I, I looked further depth back on the field and St. Colin were piling men forward. And there was a couple of midfielders from Grosvenor that were actually labouring a little bit and letting them go. Yeah, and that's it. And you could see the determination to get forward and score goals, which is great to see. Balls into the box. Well won there from Grosvenor centre-half. And now Kelly. He's got to have some legs to get this one, though. That one's going to run well out, but it will be a throw. It's actually not in a bad area in the end. They'll be able to get up the pitch, squeeze him right in the corner and... From Grosvenor's point of view, that actually could be a nice little ball to put in. If they yeah. can stop St. Columns getting out here, it could end up being a chance themselves. I know it's one of those silly commentator things that you say, but that was a really good time for St. Colin to equalise. You, you just felt that Grosvenor was starting to, to get a bit of a, a grip on the match and they were playing longer balls into the corner and trying to kill the game off. 100%. And with the, with the, bigger, with the bigger crowd behind Grosvenor as well, there was a fear maybe from St. Colin's point of view that if it went another 10, 15 minutes, they probably would miss their chance and the big crowd would get behind the, yeah. the more home team here. Fairly enjoyable match. That's a beautiful flick on there, but a substitute. Stephen Bullock. Here's McCarty. I'm so happy that they changed the rule where that wasn't an automatic sending off for the goalkeeper. Yeah. Because last year that would have spoiled the match. No, but it killed the game and there was no need. And it, it, there was nothing no, there was nothing spiteful or nothing vicious about the goalkeeper. He simply yeah. made a judgment call. He couldn't stop him. He took him down. And then it, the bit of quality from the striker to stand up, dust himself off and put it in the corner. That's what you want to see. Not did to you, kill a game. Did he actually get a yellow card? I, I didn't even see the referee brandish a yellow. I, I, didn't, I didn't see one. I could be wrong. No, I didn't see a yellow no. card brandish. But I, at the end I, of the day, it was just one of those things. It was Absolutely. But great to see Doherty have the, have the composure to step up and do the business. Oh, balls in at the back post and corner. Good decision. That was uh, Conor, Conor Fagan there. But the ball just hit the back of the centre half for Grosvenor and we'll have another corner. Yes, I'm not sure if a goalkeeper actually took a yellow card for that challenge. You can see a bit more needle in the game now, a bit more aggro, a bit more fight as the game's getting closer towards the end. They're all settled in. Yeah. Um, a few more, a few tackles flying in, but it's great to see. It's not vicious in any way. It's physical. It's, it's enjoyable, and they're getting stuck in. And it's all fair. So happy days. Yeah, it's just tense, isn't it? It's tense. That's, that's what it. it's all about. But that's what you want. It's a final. It doesn't matter. And you want to see them represent their school with passion. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Corner for St. Column. The Devi boys are right back in this match. That swung in into the six-yard box. Great delivery. Very, very good ball again. They're dying to go and head. And unlucky from the St. Collins point of view, they couldn't get ahead on it. Good defending from Grosvenor. Yes, some great quality. And I, I think it's one of those things that you do get with a lighter ball, isn't it? That you do get the ability for better football to be played. And That's it. And both teams have embraced that, which has been fantastic to see. Long kick there. That's a good flick on. Here's Kelly. The longer ball again, doing it for Grosvenor. But Kelly makes a mess of the turn. And St. Colin will now come away. A bit of a fortunate ricochet. Oh, great skill again, Doherty. Doherty to Bullock, the substitute. Bullock shows some skills. Good defending. And Grosvenor keep it in and clear the lines. Good defending from the Grosvenor point of view. And that just shows you what they're all about. They've been nice and, and solid. Yes, they had that one that, for the penalty, but at the end of the day, they've really kept them to very few chances here, St. Columns. 
Um, I was speaking to a few people at half time and uh, a friend of mine, Colin Coates, he's the club captain here at Crusaders. Here's, he's here watching his old school um, and he learned all those skills at this school when he was there. And you can see that coming through here again with the Grosvenor defenders. Yeah. Oh, that's a little touch. Should be a Grosvenor ball. Again, an opportunity here for Grosvenor to pin them in. They're in a position on the pitch where if they can keep them here, make it hard for them to get out, it could actually lead to a chance for Grosvenor. Good work by number 10. Well, we just have a slight lulling proceedings. <laughs> Take That's a breather. I know, an exciting 10, 15 minutes there, so. Certainly I'd, was. I'd, I'd say the players will do the same. Well, thankfully, uh, the rain is has just held up a little bit. It's still raining out there, but it's not as strong as it was. Bullock looking to come in on the overlap on the right. Certainly Matthew Kirk is, is holding back a little bit more than he was, possibly due to the wind. Here is Kirk. we are right back for St. Column. You can see again the ability, the comfort on the ball here from St. Columns, playing through the midfield, moving around. Kirk came in, Quinn came out, Malone got on the ball. Great to see the fluidity of the play. And again, there's the sunny weather of Belfast on again. Lashing rain and the wind has picked up. Here come Grosvenor. Lovely ball outside. And that one will go to a throw. Grosvenor really pushing hard here. Stuart Nelson certainly uh, took a little while to get his footing, you could say, but he's, he's certainly got into the match now and he's become a, a, a big out player for Grosvenor. Here yep. he is again. Nice inside ball. Slightly misjudged, though. And St. Colum again, and here's Doherty. He's been the outstanding player. Oh, great vision again. Oh, great ball, and he's just offside. That's unfortunate. It's great play by him. Again, to see the pass, reverse pass. Nobody else in the pitch maybe had seen that, and he had the quality to pull it off. I think it was Mackin off on the left. Uh, he'd be disappointed. He's looking across the line. He should be keeping himself onside there. Yeah. Mackin off, of course, coming from a, a very talented family. Um, brothers already represented Northern Ireland and going professional contracts and it's, uh, he's been, it's been a name that's been very successful up in Derry over the last few years so hopefully young Nathan can keep that going and, and, and build on his brother's success Long ball and a difficult one for Grosvenor to, to hold on to there that was uh, Tim Wilson And uh, yeah, Daniel Martin won't be too chuffed with that. No, I think he's just thought I'll get it into the right area. But yeah. with the wind behind him and a slippy pitch here, you're, that's never going to hold up here. There's, so. no, there's no doubt the story of the match has certainly changed. Grosvenor are not playing the ball, not trying to play the ball through midfield now. We are seeing long balls constantly from the Grosvenor team. It's definitely been a shift in their style. But then when they have got the ball up to that general area, They've got the likes of Nelson, the likes of Carnahan on the ball because Kelly's been able to hold it up. Yeah. Doherty tries a little one-two there with uh, McInef. Well, I hope you're enjoying the coverage here on the uh, Northern Ireland Schools FA YouTube channel. This is the uh, first ever live coverage of uh, the Northern Ireland Schools final. It's an honour to be here. Fantastic platform for these kids to show themselves, and as I said, you could have you could have people from across the UK, across Europe, watching these games. Yeah, and to showcase the kind of talents that we've seen already, people will be looking at this and they'll remember the name, same as we will be here commentating. Yeah, absolutely. You, you can see the talent on show; it's never been done before, and it's great to see by the schools' FA. It's absolutely wonderful. It's a real step forward. Here's Kelly. Puts his own man in trouble a little bit there with Kernahan, the goal scorer. He's been very busy in this match, Kernahan. Also got a yellow card earlier on. Oh, he's late with a little tackle there as well on the left back. He'll be lucky to get away with that one. I think yeah. if he wasn't on a yellow, he'd maybe be looking <laughs> at a yellow for that one. Yeah. He's doing well to keep his head down and walk off as quick yeah. as possible. Yeah. 
Yeah, so don't it, make eye contact, whatever you do. But that's, this is the kind of game you don't want to see red cards. I, I no. thought his, his, his original yellow, as I said in the first half, was soft for me. I wouldn't have given it. Um, it's into the second half when those kind of tackles are happening, you can start to discipline people. But it's yeah. not been a, a dirty game. It's been a fair game played in the right intensity. Daniel Lama, free header. Here's Kelly. Kelly looks out wide to Tim Wilson. Kern hands in on this. T Kelly's picking up a loose ball, but it's cleared by St. Column. They don't have mass numbers forward, Grover. Just three men typically on these attacks. And the one thing you notice with St. Column, they're usually attacking in fives or sixes. Here's another one. Six men forward on this move. Oh, great Here's McCarty. Just couldn't get the ball under control. That seems to be, as you say, the, the clear difference. They look to be, uh, the Grosvenor boys are going with almost a front four, three behind Kelly. But when uh, St. Combs go forward, it's five and six, it's full backs, it's midfielders. And yeah. they're really exposing themselves defensively, fair enough, but they're going for it going forward. Well, I've lost count. My pen stopped working. It's so cold. I've lost count of how many corners now, but there's no doubt St. Column have had more. Here's a good cross in. That's a wonderful header from Lewis Cunningham. That's Daniel Lama there. Great defending. That's celebrated by you can see the defenders patting each other on the head, patting each other on the back. That's like a goal for defenders. I never understood that personally as an attacker. But they go and head and kick anything, and that's what it's all about for them. Yes, it's all, it's, all, it's all about that neutral zone, I used to call it. You know, that area of uncertainty between the goalkeeper and defenders. And uh, That's it. And in fairness, the, 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 yeah. <laughs> the defenders the defenders of Grosvenor have done brilliant. There's only that one chance they've been caught all day. Considering the possession they've been up against and the chances they've been up against, they've kept them down to very few actual clear cut. Grosvenor having a chance here to get a few men forward. So centre halves are going up. Lewis Cunningham making a move up. This will be a test for Cunningham. Win behind him. It's actually a, it's a tough angle. It's very straight. So it'll be interesting to see if he can he can get the right way. And this it's very easy to overhit this kind of angle. Yeah. And go out of play for a goal kick. Opportunity here for Grosvenor. Good delivery here. Kernahan puts That's a good ball, ball in. That's oh. a free header on the edge of the six-yard box. It was Daniel Lama himself, and Re that just well. It, that just about summed up everything we've been saying about that match, about this match. Great opportunity. Again, a simple ball in from Kernan. Lovely weight on the, on the ball. And he's gone. He's attacked it brilliantly. Free header. And it, unfortunately for him, he just couldn't hit the target. If I think if he hits the target there, it'd have been, it's a definite goal. Keeper is planted. Nothing he can do. But it shows you again, Grosvenor, not their game naturally. But as soon as they put the ball in the box, they get a chance. Malone, Malone. Malone. Lovely well, moving side. Bullock. It's becoming more end to end here. Yeah. The possession the possession has definitely stopped as much. Players probably tiring, not wanting to get on the ball as much. It's it's all about the chances, all about getting the ball in the right areas. Possibly a little bit of fortune there for St. Colum. I thought that may have been given as a foul. Good skill. Let the game flow, though. Referee could have played yeah. advantage there. Yeah. Well, I think when Daniel Lama goes to bed tonight, I'm sure this has happened too many times, he'll be thinking about that six-yard free header yeah. and wondering how it didn't end up in the back of the net. Obviously, I never miss chances like that, personally. <laughs> but, um, no, in all seriousness, he's up. He's done everything right. And he, he will, hopefully, from his point of view and Governor's point of view, they won't live to regret that chance because it was massive and it would have been a well-timed goal going to the last 15, 20 minutes. Yet again, just proving the point. The longer ball from Grosvenor is causing real trouble for St. Colum. Looks like we've got a substitution taking place below us. Connor, um, Nathan McInef is coming off. And Kieran Deary is entering the arena. So McInef, who's had an outstanding game, hasn't he? He was tremendous first half. He's... he's Floated out of it a wee bit in the second half here as the play has mainly come down the centre and right, but you can see his talent, and as I said, he comes from a very talented footballing family. To Colum, well, it's their turn to put the big ball in. Keeper comes out to clear. Tim Lama, and, uh, well, there was some sort of collision in there that the referee didn't like, and we'll have a free kick. Goal goalkeeper dealt well. Um, he came out, he timed his punch, and he, he decided... He couldn't come over the top of people and keep a hold of it, so it was a good decision. He got away with it, the decision from the referee anyway, but he had done well himself.
Tim Lama with the kick. And again, another long one. Headed away by Conal Fagan, number four for St. Column. And I think it's from here now that Governor can play. They can try to get the ball down and play. They've gone direct up to this point, but now they can get the ball down, get it into the likes of Conan and Nelson and get playing. That's the key. If they want to be successful, they're going to have to use the talent they have in or around Kelly. Yeah. 15 minutes to go. Dermot was telling me before that he, he's getting a name as a man who does country on matches <laughs> that always go to overtime and penalties. Uh, yes, I'm becoming the co-commentator <laughs> of extra time. <laughs> I have a, a terrible track record, so if we go to extra time here, I either apologise or, or, or you can say thanks to me after if you're enjoying it. I've got to be honest, I'm, I'm absolutely loving this. So I, I, I'd be up for another 30 minutes. That's it. Uh, it's possibly two halves of 10, actually. I, I didn't ask the officials before, but we'll find out. Ball just uh, going the wrong side of uh, Joe McCarthy there. It's not like young Quinn. He hasn't given away many balls. It's probably the wrong decision. They should have kept it nice and short. McCarthy was the man brought down by the goalkeeper for that penalty. The equaliser in this match. Connor Kernahan opening the scoring with a header. Again, and referee the... play advantage. Yeah. Keep an eye on it. Referee's had a pretty solid game, but those, those little things can let the game flow here a wee bit. Yeah, yeah. He didn't need to blow that. I think, uh, I think he possibly accepts that with hindsight. You certainly always know where the referee is on this pitch, don't you? What? That is yes. so ultra bright. I used to have a goalie top like that. You definitely, uh, <laughs> you definitely could pick him out of a lineup. That's for sure. Like, yeah, he doesn't blend into the background. Yeah. Well, you know that you know some goalkeepers used to believe that if you wall for less than top, that actually would put opponents off when you're coming for crosses and things. All oh, right. And. Uh, Anything, you know what goalkeepers are like. Yes, They're all nutters. Yes, they are mad. I was going to say that. Like, yeah, <laughs> They're probably be put off by the fact that the lad is a mad, mad man in goal. To stay away from him where possible. <laughs> Nothing to do with the jersey that's on his back. <laughs> good run here. Good run. Yeah. Oh, he delayed the pass too much. It was a good run by the fullback. They seem, they seem to have moved Kirk into midfield. I think it is now. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Kirk has gone into midfield. Deary was making a, a sterling move run down the right hand side and actually had space so a slight difference in the shape from yeah Ma Matthew Kirk's actually gone to left back oh yes and they pushed on the left back to left wing so yeah. it is a bit of a reshuffle for St Columns ever since Mac and F went off well we were remarking that he did seem to have a very good left left foot for yeah. a, a right back well he's just gone to left back so fair seems enough. to be a talent boy and as I say if he's playing midfield for the international team it's, it's a brilliant thing to have at that age group that you're flexible and you're adaptable to different positions. He's shown his quality. Yeah. Lovely little bit of skill there from Kernahan. Kelly's hunting in, but that one's going to be too long. I do feel bad for, for Big Kelly up top for Grover. I think they need to get more bodies in around him. Nelson and Kernan have tried to get in touch, but even the two midfielders behind that, they can probably get in touch a wee bit more because he seems to be a bit isolated there. Yeah. Heavy challenge there. McCarthy holding his knee. You've yeah. hopefully nothing serious on a pitch like this. You, you see a lot of knee injuries and people getting their knees stuck and stuff, but hopefully it's nothing serious. Hopefully he just twisted his knee. Is that the issue on a 4G pitch like this? It's, you just don't really get the give in the ground that you would it, do on grass sometimes. It can be, uh, it can be. Depending on the studs or the blades that people wear, you can get your, your foot can plant and your knee can turn separately in a strange way so you get quite a few medial ligaments and cruciate ligaments and stuff so but luckily McCarthy's up and he's walking around so hopefully nothing negative from yeah. me anyway maybe I'm looking at the worst case scenario here all the time yeah yeah he's certainly still a bit gingerly there he's uh he's uh the way he just played that ball his right knee wasn't looking great there but we'll see how he goes it's amazing what adrenaline does for you that's it here's Connor Kernahan the goal scorer he seems to be getting much busier in the second half that's it but that, that's another example where I think the Grosvenor midfield can go 10 yards and back up Kernahan back up Kelly yeah he was on his own with two or three St Columns round him they need to get bodies round him like St yeah. Columns have done in their attack yeah you're absolutely right he just didn't have an option at all did he no. he, he, he was on his own nobody was coming to support St Columns crossfield ball here's Stephen Bullock great touch He's come well back again. Cunningham. Sorry again, he's looking for the true pass. He's come in and always getting their head up looking for the true ball. It's good to see. Yeah, the referee's referee. gonna blow that one. That was 
<laughs> he might say he was going to win it by the fact he took the player out with his arm first. Yes, I think that was the, the big man against the wee man syndrome there. And I think the wee man, <laughs> yeah. the wee man felt the effects of it. He'll, he'll be sore tomorrow after that little forearm, we call it, rather than elbow in the back <laughs> of the head. But again, a uh, good delivery last time from Cornyn. He scored yeah. one. He probably should have an assist if the big man had headed it home from the last free kick. So hopefully he can do the same here and put it on a plate for one of them. Well, Daniel Lama, Lewis Cunningham are both up. In fact, Lewis Cunningham's just having a breather at the back, but Lama's up there, the number six. He's the dangerous man. He's coming in for this one. And that was chaos at the back for St. Colum. Oh. High foot there. Yeah, high foot from Lama. Everyone is okay at the end of it. Good defending. It was a substitute who's come on at right back for St. Combs. It was a great header. He's obviously been given the job to pick up Lammer at these set pieces, and he's done brilliant there. Yeah. Well, that was a tremendous header there from uh, Emmett McGilloway. Right at the death, it looked like uh, Lama was coming in to, for another one of those six, six yard box free headers, and uh, McGilloway got a head on it. It wasn't a clean header, the ball was bouncing around the place. Here again, you can see the demand from the likes of Malone and Quinn in midfield. They're demanding the ball quickly and early into their feet, and they're dying to get on it. They haven't had as much benefit and haven't as much uh, influence on the game as they did in the first half. Any free kick for Grosvenor in the St. Colum half is going to be dangerous. St. Colum clear, Connell Fagan. Nicely handled there by Lewis Cunningham. The Grosvenor crowd, just a little bit quieter, trying to G each other up a little bit. They're, they're not getting the, the wind in their face. That's a massive kick from Tim Lama there. Ball's bouncing loose on the six yard, on the 18 yard box. Kelly, yeah, a little nudge. One of those sneaky little pushes and uh, the free kick given to St. Colum. I think you're starting to see a few little niggles, a few little bumps now. The likes of, uh, the likes of Malone in midfield is limping. He's, dose, he's sat himself down, but He's taken a couple of batterings today and he hasn't been as influential recently, so you wonder, are these injuries starting to take effect? There's Jack Malone uh, struggling. He's just uh, talking to one of his colleagues and just nodded further up the field to say that he took a little a little one earlier and it's still not settled yet. Well, this is the kind of breather that helped him at this stage. You can see the, the coaches on the line giving out bottles of water, giving out little bits of instructions. 10, 15 minutes here to go and it could be massive. This could be the game changer. These kids won't want to go to extra time. They won't want penalties. They won't, won't want the suspense of that. They'll want to finish this in the 80 minutes we have. Yeah. The question I haven't asked you about this pitch yet, is it actually more tiring to play on? Um, I suppose I have a lot of experience playing on it. I think it's like anything if you're used to it. It's like if you're a, if you're a cross-country runner, you're used to running on hills. But then if you go and run a marathon on a street, your legs wouldn't, wouldn't have the same... Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't react the same. It's the same yeah. here. If you're used to running in a soft grass pitches, this is more like running outside in the road. So it can it can go either way depending on your fitness and the way your body is built. Here's Davey. Uh, Bullock. Bullock just ran into heavy traffic. Oh, Kelly. No, Nelson's Bernahan. away. Good ball. Here's an opportunity. That's a great ball. Keeper's coming out for this. Oh. And the keeper does sterling work there because that was Stuart Nelson. Again, the, the same three players for Groven are going forward. Kelly gets it on the turn, plays a good ball through to Kernan. Kernan has the awareness and the head up and puts it through for Nelson on a play. And in fairness to the goalkeeper, as you say, that's what you want from a modern goalkeeper. Sweeper keeper, out he comes, brave, and he's put his body on the line. Unfortunately, yeah. both are now sitting down injured, but hopefully neither is serious. Yeah, there's certainly a heavy collusion between the two there. And the ball could have actually ended up anywhere. We're just going to have uh, a little bit of treatment for both players. And again, this is the opportunity. You're looking around the pitch. There's a lot of boys stretching, a lot of boys sitting around. Maybe getting the, you can see him alone jogging around at the halfway line, trying to keep his legs moving. Kirk at left back, sitting down, stretching his groin. So you can see that they are feeling the effects. It's a big game for them. The enthusiasm and stuff will be out of the legs at this stage, and they'll be starting to feel the pressure. Yeah, seven, six minutes to go. Time has flown in the second half. We're not sure whether it's 10 or 15 minutes uh, extra time each way. It may even not get that far. So thankfully, uh, Stuart Nelson is up. 
Yeah, so... And the weird ruling is, of course, if it's a goalkeeper, you're allowed to go back in. So actually, St. Column have got an extra man for a, for a short while because Nelson has to go off. It's one of these weird rules that uh, got brought in for some reason. Good defending, well dealt with. Yes, they handled that one well. He headed it and he followed his header. He went out, squeezed the play and made sure there was no ball come back in. Nelson back on the pitch now will be a plus again for, for Grosvenor. A big influence for them going forward. As Daniel Lama has gone back to defence, defensive duties. I thought he may have stayed up for this. Nobody particularly to mark for him. And here's the big ball in. Headed across oh. field, loose ball. That was great play by King, but the problem is King is the centre forward. He was out in the wing. He set it up for the, the cross for Nelson, and then nobody in the middle of the box <laughs> to put the ball home. Yeah. Tumbleson did well with that header, put he, it back into the mixer. He did brilliant. He just needed his mate alongside him to try and... So here we have, again, King is out in the wing and should really be getting himself back in the box to try and score some goals. Yes, that was Daniel Martin there. Great win it, by McCarthy. Oh, here's, here's an opportunity for St. Colum. Doherty again. And he's wanting, he's wanting the referee, he's wanting the linesman to, uh, in fact, the referee is going to give the call. I'm not too sure about that. Doherty's done well. He's bought himself a free kick there. Yeah. But it's a dangerous area now. Good delivery from the likes of Malone or someone here, and it's a, it's a big chance for St. Columns. Great time to score for either team. Yes, it's, uh, it's one of those situations now, four minutes to go. A goal for either team is going to almost certainly finish this, unless you're Barcelona, of course. That's that. <laughs> that was incredible, wasn't it? Here's Malone with the cross in. Handled well by Grosvenor. They've really been strong in the air. And now here's the counter-attack. Kernahan looking to get in on the end of this. Should be a free kick there, pushing the back from Kirk. He's let him off for a throw in. Hopefully Kernahan's OK. He's lying down off the pitch. Yeah. Oh, he makes the signal for a sub. Yeah, he's had enough. I think he actually collided. His leg actually collided with uh, the post over there. I think the referee's had a, has a, he's had a pretty, pretty decent game, the referee, but again, that's just a little niggly one. He's right in front of the linesman as well. You think that's an easy enough decision to see here from the crowd, so you'd be, you'd be hoping they'd see it from the pitch as well. Hopefully, Kernan will recover, can come back on. If not, it's nothing serious. Yeah, there's a couple of players warming up below us. I think uh, that could be the last we see of uh, Kernahan, Connor Kernahan. Yes, the physio is running around the pitch at the minute to see, but he doesn't seem too confident. He's sitting there dejected. He's had a good game, Kernan, and it'd be a shame from Grosvenor's point of view if he has to go off. Oh, lovely little skill there from McCarty. McCarty's battled well. He's been the focal point with all the, the smaller players around him, the likes of uh, Doherty and McEnough before he went off, and the two boys in midfield, Malone and, and Quinn. So he's done, he's done well. He's been the foil for them. He's taken a lot of battering, a lot of beating, but he's done well for them. So Colum have a, an extra man for a little while. Still haven't got the sub on yet. They, uh, they look as if they want to try and get Kernahan back on by the looks of it. They're I, not giving up on him. He's I just think got a it, bit of cramp. It may simply be just a bit of cramp. It's like I said, the, the pressure of a game like this for a young lad, he's, he's worked tirelessly all day. He's been very effective, but he's obviously a big player for Grosvenor. Curtis Elliott, let's leave it out the bottle. That was a dangerous ball to leave, and McCarty was really nearly on that one. There's the slip in the pitch again that you see, and... You, you notice when you're not maybe not on it, and he, you're not on this kind of surface very regularly. But here we have Quinn now again. He's dropped off it for 20 minutes, half an hour in the, in the game, but he's maybe hopefully going to try and get back on it for St. Cullum's and influence it again going on. Good strong tackle again. Solid tackles there. Tomilson looking oh. for the cross ball, and Nelson now goes oh. down with cramp. Oh, there's another bit of cramp, yep. Like that bit of competitiveness there from Kirk. He was originally going to help him, saw the game was playing on, thought, do you know what? Yeah. He's sitting on the ground, I can hit the road here. <laughs> uh, this match might go on quite a way. Um, if we're going to have every, a stoppage for every bit of cramp, we, uh, this could be... Uh, Kernahan's back on. And I think that's what it'll be. You'll, you'll see a few of the boys drop. The likes of the likes of Kirk and or the likes of Nelson and Kernan have done an awful lot of running for Grosvenor. Yeah. In the first half, they were tracking all the way back. And they've had to make up big distances. So you can see why the legs will be going. It's not necessarily a fitness thing. It's a bit of pressure, a bit of mental pressure and physical pressure in a big game like this. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit more like casualty at the moment rather than a football final. There's people hobbling around all around the pitch at the moment. 
We've had a little lull, but you always get one last chance in these games, and I yep. wonder which team it will fall to here. Well, we have got 30 seconds to go on the clock. You'd imagine we'd have a couple of minutes added. There's been a few short yeah. stoppages. You'd imagine we'd have a couple of minutes at least. Yeah, oh, absolutely. The board is about to go up here by the Ford official. Oh, yes. Two minutes. Two minutes, I'd have expected yes. at least five. <laughs> <laughs> So, as I said earlier, the extra time commentator might be coming back. The haunt is all here. So, two minutes given. I'm sure we've had more than two minutes, but it is quite cold. Yeah, that's it. And the only the only good thing is that you have a lot of subs still, still to use for both teams. They can yeah. use up to five, and there's a lot of... Oh, big chance here. Well, still a decision to give away... Yeah. A free kick in such a dangerous area late on, and this is the chance to show their quality. Young lad Kirk straight over, he fancies it. And you wonder, does he have the quality? Straight away, Quinn's giving him the ball, and he's I, I can't see him crossing this one. Yes, Kirk certainly, uh, well, we know he's got a great delivery with left or right foot. I wonder whether, whether they're going to ask him to, to deliver a quality ball in, or will he go for the shot? What do you think? I think he's looking across purely to kid people on, but I can see a young lad last minute of the game having a go from here. Will he go for it? Kirk goes for the... Oh, he's gone for the driven cross. I take it all back. He was very unselfish. It was a good ball in. Great, great defending again by Grosvenor, though. Great ball in. That was from Matthew Kirk. And uh, again, the Grosvenor defence showing some supreme skills there. St. Colum, time is running out on the clock. Dangerous ball in. Here's Kelly. Another oh, corner. It dropped. It dropped to Doherty, and he was obviously wanting it on his right. He should have had a swing with his left. I know he's got himself a corner, but if he had a swing with the left, he was only seven, seven or eight yards out. Anything can happen from there. Thirty seconds on the clock was almost no time for anything else. Balls into the box. Here's an opportunity in the back post, and Deary. Great defending by Kelly, showing his quality at the back, putting his body on the line. He's a striker back there last minute, and that's exactly what his manager will want from him. Well, I think that's going to be that for normal time. Deary was appe appealing for another corner. The referee blows the whistle. That's full time, and we now go into extra time. And, and you have to say that's probably about fair. Um, both teams have done well. Neither team probably has deserved to win it or lose it. It's been a good battle of different styles, so hopefully we'll see more of it now in extra time. Well, it's been a, a fairly enjoyable match. And uh, we've got yet more to come here. Both teams are uh, staying out on the pitch. Um, I don't know if we, we still don't know if it's 10 or 15 minutes. I think it's two tens, yeah. It's two, two tens, tens, is it? Thank you very much. So we've got two tens and then the the possibilities of penalties. And it, it finished penalties here uh, at the Ballymena Showgrounds last year when Grosvenor won that penalty shootout. And this will be a battle here as well. It'll be, it'll be interesting. You see players down there stretching. In particular, Cramp is a worry. And you've seen a couple of people drop already. But it's now up to the management team to use their quality, use the depth that they have on the bench. Both teams have three subs at least, I think, left. So it's a case of trying to use it and trying to bring him in at the right time where you can have a real influence. And unfortunately, with it's such a short extra time, you have to be thinking, who's going to take my penalties here? <laughs> so if you're going to take off players that are maybe down with cramp, who would be your penalty takers, it'll play with your mind. So the managers Absolutely. and the coaches now have a bigger test on their hands. Yes, you've got to think about You've got to be thinking penalties at this stage now. And... Uh, there's Kerner, Connor Kernahan who scored the goal, who's looked very busy. Surely he's going to be one of the penalty takers. He only signified once he wanted to come off when he was at the far side. That's it. He was obviously <laughs> talked out of it nicely by the physio. <laughs> it's easy to say you want to come off when your leg is cramping, but gives you a bit of magic, a magic sponge and a, and a shot of water and you're back on again. <laughs> so uh, 10 minutes extra time for sure here in this uh, Danske Bank Northern Ireland Schools Cup final. But you can see there's depth in both benches. You can see the subs are out there. They must be thinking in their head, one of these lads can be the hero. One of these lads can go on and take the penalty. Um, 
throughout my career, a lot of times I was in their shoes, and you are, you're sitting there now excited, thinking he's going to give me the nod going into the last few minutes, and the fresh legs could be the difference. So when you took when you were in penalty shootouts, your striker, obviously you know the goal. Did you yes. prefer to go early or late? I was always a late man. I actually yeah. always went. Uh, I always went four or five usually. Um, right. And I, I, the key for me was I never changed. I always went the same corner, the same type of penalty. So even if you, you, I'd taken a penalty against you before, you're maybe second guessing, thinking he'll change it. But I always went the same. So <laughs> that's the key for this as well. The legs will start to go for these young lads if they try and be too smart. Sometimes the best thing you can do is put your foot through it, close your eyes almost, and, and power it home. Yeah. We had a penalty shootout in England schools uh, at Manchester City Stadium, actually. Good. It was 16-15. <laughs> it was incredible. Well, I'll go, I'll go Strikers Union and say the strikers, the, the players outfield must have been brilliant. I'll not, I'll not say the goalkeepers were terrible. I'll say the, the boys outfield must have been brilliant. <laughs> but it's, it's like anything. You, you turn around to anybody and say, right from 12 yards, can you put the ball in the net? It's very, very easy in theory. Yeah. But when pressure comes on, when the, the mind plays tricks on you, and in particular, if you were, a, I know young Doherty dealt with it well in front of the Grosvenor crowd, but if, he, if you had to take the penalties in front of this hostile Grosvenor crowd, it might be a different story for you. I always remember on a penalty shootout, if it was 5 all and you got to the sixth person, I'd always walk up to this guy taking and say, you were, the, you were one of the guys who bottled it on the first five, weren't you? And that's <laughs> it. And sometimes the, the, the ones that'll surprise you, you'll always think to yourself, right, the centre forward will take one. And it might be the centre half or the left back or centre midfield or the goalkeeper even who wants to take one. Yeah. And they'll confidently stride up and just stick it home. Well, here we go. We're going to stay as we were at the end of the second half. We're just uh, waiting for the official to... Uh, he's just having a chat with our fourth official here. I think... It, you know what, I'm sure he's saying, is it 10 or 15? <laughs> he probably is, he probably is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is the Northern Ireland... Uh, football official down there so I think he's just clarified that it is 10 good lad yes it was announced there by the Tano as well so it definitely is which is good so will that uh, but that's what I mean 20 minutes is a very short time to go but these legs you, you'll start, start to see them go a lot of pressure any mistake any bit of magic now and you could be the hero or the villain unfortunately so if you have just joined us this is the uh, Danske Bank Northern Ireland Schools Cup Final for 2017 St. Columns College in yellow from Derry on the left, kicking left to right, and it's Grosvenor Grammar School in the blue, kicking from right to left. This is wonderful. Oh, oh, what a run this is! What a run! He's still going. We can see now why he was pushed forward from left back to left wing. And here we have Kirk again. Well, Dylan Mooney oh. was a very busy man in the first half. He, he was quite quiet in the second, to be honest, but... He's certainly woken up here, and now here come Grosvenor, but they don't have a lot of men forward, just three men in attack. Again, and you start to see, so you see number 10 here for Grosvenor as well, dropping with cramp. But again, he has the tape on the socks. If he, if he had the experience, he's take the tape off the socks and let the calves breed for a couple of minutes, because he'll struggle throughout the rest of the extra time. Yeah, Grosvenor just got four men forward at the moment, looking to play a bigger ball in. Here's Tumulson. Kelly coming in. McCarthy done well again. He's not lost many headers, the big lad up front for yeah. St. Columns. Here's Kelly. He's been pretty much on his own all match. Tumulson plays that one off the ground. Tumulson's worried. It's, it's cramped from his point of view, but he's another one calling for a, a substitution here. Yeah, Tumulson, Tumulson wants to come off. There's no doubt about that. But again, cramp from his point of view. Oh, oh, a mistake there almost. And uh, yeah, you can't blame your goalkeeper for that one. <laughs> he's, he's just watching. Tireless work again from the big man McCarthy for St. Columns, putting pressure on even late in the game here. His legs show no sign of stopping for him. Deary goes around the outside. Good play from Deary. Quality cross in, but it's just too far. Mooney manages to keep it in. Oh, wonderful skills from Mooney. He's really woken up in this extra time period. Is into the middle. Chance for Doherty. Brave defending again. Well done, Grosvenor. They've been really backs to the wall at times in this game, but they've stuck together and they fought for each other and cleared their lines. And that one flicked off a St. Colum player as well as it was cleared, so they get the throw. There's no doubt St. Colum are playing some superb football here. 
And you can see the togetherness with them celebrating when they when they defend it and clear it. They're in this to win it. They haven't come along here for a day out. They want to get the they want to keep the trophy in Grosvenor for another year. McGilloway does well there from an initial fluffed clearance. And here's Kirk, who's now marauding down the left side. He's absolutely everywhere, this man. Shows no sign of stopping again. The legs seem to be there. So he, I think, as I said, if he plays midfield, usually he'll be well able to get up and down. Here's, here's Mooney yet again. We've only been playing for three minutes. He's, he's already had three major runs down this left-hand side. Kirk has a little look up and tries to chip it in for McCarty. Well, the way this is going, there's only one team that can, could win this, isn't there? The St. Colum are absolutely dominating. Again, very much, uh, very much all the quality and all the possession has been with them, but again, very direct and very very uh, no-nonsense style from Grosvenor. Goalkeeper even there, getting his players up the pitch and just getting it up. You can see Josh Kelly getting them, trying to usher them up alongside him, get the players alongside him, because they will have chances. It just shows you. This is the same case at half-time, and we thought nobody else ended up with St. Colum's, and it, Grosvenor just came back into it, and possibly more effective in the last third. Well, I'll give you a warning now, Dermot. I'm, I will be asking you for a man of the match shortly. OK. I, uh, I had an inkling it might go to extra time when you told me your record. <laughs> yes, so I'm, I'm sorry. I apologise. I hope you had nothing planned for after this. <laughs> oh, no, this is lovely. Uh, a bit more cramp going on on the pitch, so... Well, it might be ten minutes, but I'm sure we're going to get plenty of extra time added. But this will be brilliant for these kids. Big pitch here, big venue, big crowd. And yes, they're cramping up, but it's it's good to see that they're dealing with the pressure and they're they're putting on a real show for everyone who's come to watch. Great to hear the drums still being banged. Halfway through this first period of extra time, big ball up from the back. Kelly tries to get on it. Ball's gone loose. Kernahan. Kelly again. Extra man free on the left here. Here's Tumbleson. Kelly wants the ball back. And in fact. Uh, Kelly's demanding of the ball, actually put Tumbleson off there for a second. He was going to deliver the first time. I think if Tum Tumbleson might have been better going down on his left, he's obviously a naturally right footer player. Wanted to cut in, but down the left was the, was the area to go down, get it fired across the box. Yeah, here's Kernahan, the goal scorer with the corner. Chance here, big lads up for Grosvenor. Yeah, all the big guys are in. Lama, who's been the dangerous man so far. Keeper makes a, a bit of a mess of that one. Didn't punch, just palmed the ball out. And here you see the breaking bodies, oh, poor quality, cramp, must be cramp from the big lad. <laughs> yeah, you see all the bodies streaming forward for St. Coleman's there on the, <laughs> St. Columns there on the, on the break. Yeah, I'm not sure if you could see that on our camera, but there was a sea of yellow going from left to right. Here's Kelly on the edge of the box, turn for Kelly, corner. And again, an opportunity to bring the big man forward. Daniel Lama's coming in, he's been the one man who's caused chaos. Big, at the back for St. Colum. Big Colonel Fagan really struggling here with Cramp. He's gone down two or three times in the last couple of minutes. And he seems, there's players with them talking about substitutions, but he really does seem to be struggling. If you're, if you're being smart here, big centre half, you won't want to bring anyone on to treat him. It's a corner kick. You want your biggest lads on for the corner kick. Yeah, well, he definitely wants to be off. There's no doubt about that. He's, uh, he's looking in... Uh, quite a bit of pain here and he's been sent back on <laughs> I think that's that's what I'm saying a big lad biggest lad in the pitch here for a corner even if he is going to come off they're probably yeah. not ready to do it yet oh no it okay. looks like they've sorted it out no oh. the thing is you don't want the guy to come off and not have your sub ready that's it um, here he is number 14 is uh, has got himself ready Nathan Harkin yeah Nathan Harkin is coming on and fair play to young Fagan, he's done brilliantly and he's recognised his legs have gone. It's time to get off and let someone else come on and do the business. Well, here's a, here's a big chance now because one of your, your main defenders has gone off. Balls into the six-yard box. Lama was in there. Lama took a couple of players out on that attempted win. That's a great crossing. Keeper does brilliantly there. Superb goalkeeping from Muldoon. And St. Colum managed to clear. And here's a chance on the overlap. Oh, Bullock was looking at acres of space there if that ball could have got to him on the right hand wing. It'll be interesting to see now. Is that, I think it's three subs St. Colums have already made. Obviously, one enforced with injury, but to my knowledge, Grosvenor haven't made any changes. And 
you see a couple of their players dropping, so you have to be thinking from their management point of view, get a couple of fresh legs on and help these boys out. Oh, what a ball that is. But he was unfortunately offside. Flags up offside, so Nelson needs to keep an eye on it. He's looking across the line, he should do better there. Here's the substitute, Harkin. So another slight reshuffle for them again. Substitute who originally came on at right back, number 13. Kieran Deary has now moved into centre half. Yes, with he young has. Harkin going to right back. Yeah, a bit of shuffling around here. But that's and good as well. Here's Kernahan. That's good as well. They're using their depth. They're using the quality. Great ball by Kernahan. Oh, what a ball that is, Kelly! Oh, oh straight at the keeper. Big, big chance. And again, the quality coming from Kernahan. And young Kelly's done brilliantly all game. But that's his chance. Josh Six Kelly yards out, right in front of the goalkeeper, and he's headed it straight at him. Josh Kelly has been working his socks off all match and that's probably the first big opportunity he's had all game and there and again it shows you how effective you can be you don't have to keep possession you don't have to be 60 70 percent possession and look pretty again Grosvenor are probably more effective at times when they go forward oh. i think that's matthew kirk playing the first bad ball i think he's played all match i'm gonna blame injury because i like him i think that was an injury or a cramp or something there <laughs> Uh, he can get away with that as an excuse, maybe. Coming up to uh, the end of the first period of extra time. St. Colum. Good play from Quinn. Yes, Quinn has been wonderful. The captain. Here's Malone. Oh, chance. Oh, Bullock is in on the overlap. He's oh. got a ball across. But the whistle has gone. He was just offside. Again, it's the combination. Quinn played it out wide, back in, then went to Malone. And Malone again had the quality, and just the young lad in the right wing here went just that little step too quickly. But it was a big chance if he could have timed his run. Yes, there was a, there was a man at the back post as well. McCarty was at the back post. There was a ball onto him. And we have another cramp another this cramp. time. <laughs> it's big Emmett McGilloway. It's centre half, so dropping like flies the minute for St. Columns. But... Hopefully he can get over it and get to the little break here, have a stretch and see how he gets on. But again, very impressive that Grosvenor haven't changed. They've the same 11 players, to my knowledge, now for yeah. coming up on 90 minutes. And this has been a very intense 90 minutes, so it'll be interesting to see. They seem to have good fitness and good levels to keep going. Yes, I'm sure there's a few subs on the Grosvenor bench itching to get on there. Yeah, a few <laughs> lads will be eyeballing the coach at the minute, <laughs> standing alongside him. Well, the whistle's gone, that's half-time. And you can see the hands go straight to Josh Kelly's head. He knows it. Striker, yeah. he knows himself. He knows himself that he should probably do better, but you know what? He's worked, he's worked tirelessly all day, and he almost deserved to be able to miss a chance because he's done so well. Yeah, you've got to feel for him, Matt. He's, uh, he knows he had a big chance, and they're not missing out. Straight, straight swap over. So 10 more minutes to go, still no substitutions from Grosvenor, no messing around at all. And again we've talked all day maybe at length about the quality on show between the midfielders and different players for St. Combs, but again already since it's been one each the two big chances have been Larmer and King yeah. for Grosvenor. They've had two guilt edge chances and they'll be very disappointed if they come out on the, on the losing end of this final, they'll be very disappointed not to at least hit the target. So the final 10 minutes of, of what has been a thoroughly entertaining match here at Seaview, the home of Crusaders Football Club. Who I'm told are going to be winning the league again this year. Well, we'll not jinx anything, but it, it, they do, they're in a very positive position at the minute. They're in a good place, yeah. There's, I think it's seven points clear at the top of the league with seven or eight games to go. So hopefully from their point of view and um, from everyone at Crusaders' point of view, they can hold on to their league title for a third year in a row. Kelly losing out there. Great ball again. Good touch by McCarthy. Malone into Doherty. Doherty, great turn. Can he oh, get a shot off? Great stuff, Doherty. Oh, he Just needs, hustled out. Needs to use his left, the young lads. A couple of times now, he's fantastic quality all game. And he's been one of the standout players. But again, sometimes just have a swing at it with your left foot. Yes, Lewis Cunningham just uh, shepherded him out of play nicely there.
Well, the rain is well and truly uh, just very light drizzle at the moment. Nowhere near as heavy as it was about an hour ago. Josh King still full of running. Sometimes you miss a chance it actually can re-enthuse you to go harder and go more. So hopefully the big lad will get another chance here in the second in the second period of extra time. Lewis English with the throw. Stuart Nelson tries to play English flat but miss hits it. And St. Colum with an opportunity to come away with the ball. Looks like we're going to have a, a fourth substitution for St. Colum. And the number 10, Joe McCarthy. Big McCarthy's done tremendous. He's been very, very good. He's been a, he's actually been pushing on for man of the match in this game. He's been a real foil for them all day. So, yeah, fair play to him. Unusual to take your centre forward off with seven or eight minutes to go before penalties. Brian McCarran is on, number 15. So McCarthy won't be taking a penalty, that's for sure now. Mooney goes down in agony and frustration. And Quinn overplays that ball up. Of course, we've now got the situation we had in the first half where St. Colum, who likes to play these balls through the angles, they're having a the difficulty of the, the wind's actually behind them now. That's it, and you can see, I think, the more and more players that are dropping, it seems to be the same Columbus boys, and they can play the same quality when their legs are, their calves are starting to go, their hamstrings are starting to cr cramp up, and you just need to think to yourself, hopefully for seven or eight more minutes, they can battle on and keep going and show the quality they've done for the whole game. Grosvenor again, still haven't made a change, so impressive that the, those boys have kept going and they've battled on, but yeah. they must be feeling a wee bit heavy-legged at this stage. I want to know what's in the water up there. That's it. Maybe they, maybe because they, they won on penalties last year. Maybe they prepared for that already this year. Yeah. Certainly, uh, St. Colin players. You know, they are, they are doing a lot of work off the ball. They have, they have had a lot of the ball. It could be that perhaps they've just, you know, we we don't have the statistics you get in the Champions League <laughs> where you see how much each player is run by. But that's that it. It's been a very good game. I must say. I'm, it just shows it doesn't matter if you keep the ball and pass the ball about and look pretty at times, which St. Columns have done. Probably the more the more effective and better chances have come from, from the Grosvenor. And some of their defending has been, it's been last days, yes, but it's been brave and it's been honest and it's been really impressive. Dylan Mooney is back on. And uh, Tim Lama seems to be taking an age over this goal kick. Into the wind. And that one catches in the wind as well. Great touch by Nelson. Yeah. Good beautiful. quality. Even after coming up on 100 minutes, still has the quality to get a hold of it and take it down from a height. Quinn. Oh, Quinn's dispossessed by Kernahan. And here's Kelly looking to get in on this one. That's a loose ball. Kelly's got the ball. Oh. And Kelly has scored. Oh, what a ball from Kernahan. And Josh Kelly. It's getting a hunt from people on the sidelines. What a move. Oh, and as I said, the big lad must have been hoping for a chance to come back from his miss in the, in the, set, in the first half an extra time. And he took that really cool. It held up in the, it held up in the wind. Goalkeeper was committed. He took it around him nicely, coolly, and put it home. Fair play to him. A huge time to score. But it's not over St. Columbus. Five or six minutes here. Can they kick on and can they push on again? Oh, they certainly have. What an opportunity. The wind just held up, and Josh Kelly judged the ball better than the defending unit. I think that was uh, that was Deary there, who was uh, caught a little bit. And Kelly, beautiful finish. The keeper came out and committed himself as well, and left Kelly with just an open goal. But it's great to see because he's, he's deserved that big Kelly. He's worked hard. He's worked hard. I say yes, he had a chance, but he's done brilliantly all day. Love his skills here. Kirk wasn't really wanting that ball to be honest but they get a bonus throw in there but again as I said there's always one last chance in these games there's always <laughs> four or five minutes to go this game isn't over yet looks like we're going to see a longer throw here that is a big throw Kirk causes a bit of trouble there and cleared by Grosvenor who got everybody back this is, this is where you see back to front happen a wee bit more now. Oh, oh. offside. That's frustrating for the St. Colum team. And now we have uh, one of the Grosvenor players down with a bit of cramp. 
And now the Grosvenor boys you might see dropping a little bit more. Try and use a bit of experience in the last couple of minutes because there's no rush for them. They can slow it down at every opportunity they can. Maybe even the management team should look at a couple of substitutions here as well to freshen it up, use up a bit of the time. Three and a half minutes to go on the clock. From a forwards point of view, Diamond, you know what Josh Kelly did there was a perfect example of an attacker just being a bit. He, his, you could see his thinking was quicker. He realised there was, a, you know, you've just turned around. The wind is now blowing against, and he, he took a gamble. Yeah, and what was impressive is after so long and so much running, he's got through all day. A lot of times isolated, he was still so honest, and he kept running. And if he, a lot, of, a lot of strikers, a lot of people would have given up earlier at that stage. We just kept going, and he gambled on it. He gambled on a mistake from the defence, and he got his just rewards. And now you'll start to see St. Colm's going a bit more back to front. We were desperation stuff last couple of minutes. Yeah, they're certainly pushing people up. And there's going to be gaps, and here's one of them. Stuart Nelson looks to be through a goal, might finish here. Game over! Stuart Nelson has scored. Fantastic. And a great ball from Little, from the little man in midfield again. Jo Connor Curran scored the first, he set up the last. Fantastic play from him. Well, Matthew Kirk had been caught upfield. That was he was the left back. He was pushing up to try and uh, get a bit of pressure on, and got caught out. And that was his man. And game is over now with two and a half, just over two minutes to go. Stuart Nelson clenched fist. And you can see, you can see the dejection from the St. Columbus boys because they've done so well. At times they were tremendous. They've moved the ball very, very well. But again. It's all about scoring goals, it's all about being effective and the Grosvenor boys have done brilliantly. Yeah. Well, they go for the long distance punt, but that really does signify. A wee bit of desperation in the end, but they may as well have a go. As you say, the, the game is effectively over unless they can do something miraculous here in the last couple of minutes. But a tremendous game, you can see the quality on both sides. Yeah. But again, I go back to the same couple of boys for Grosvenor. And they've been the heroes. It's been Kelly, it's been, I think it's Carnahan, and it's uh, Nelson. Yeah, they've been the boys that have been the difference. They've been the energy. They've been the quality in the last third, and the defenders have been nice and they've battled at the back as well. Well, as we are now with a minute to go. Oh, that one's that one's on the motorway. Yes, the goal, um, goalkeeper's tried to hit a couple of cars on the way past. <laughs> um, man of the match time. What? Well, what do you think? It's it's very very hard to look past some of the same comms boys, but you have to look at it. Great ball in there. You have to look at it in the the cold had a day and just think the winning team have done tremendous and they, in particular the top three for for a Grosvenor have just they've been on their own for a lot of the game and I, I have to say with a goal and an assist I have to think it's going to oh. be young Carnahan young Connor Carnahan showed his yeah. quality there again to put Nelson through he's battled through cramp he's battled through injury he got booked early on but I think he's been tremendous number 11 for Grosvenor man of the match Connor Carnahan Totally agree. We, while you were saying that, we actually just had a ball off the line there as uh, St. Colm are putting everybody forward, the kitchen sink. But that one has gone out of play and uh, time is up. We're just waiting for the whistle now. It could be even be now. And you can see you have to feel bad for the boys from St. Colm's. They've come down from Derry, they've put on a show. They've largely been the better team in large portions of the game. But you have to feel sorry for them. They've shown great quality. They have clearly have a number of technically gifted players, but at the end of the day, goals win games, and Grosvenor will be going home with the cup. Certainly will be. What a game it's been. But, uh, I think you've also got to say, so many star performances from the, from the team in yellow here. Yeah, as, uh, you know the, the midfield is just something to dream about, isn't it? The skills, his wonderful skill, and Doherty, of course, up front has been superb. Doherty's tremendous all day, and I think if, if you were looking at Saint, Col uh, if they'd come out on top on this, you'd have to say Doherty has been a huge, huge influence. But he's just dip, dipped away when the the extra time has come on. He just hasn't had the same kind of quality. Kirk has been tremendous. Malone has been very, very good. McCarthy before he went off. Yeah, uh, you have a pick of the players in in yellow, but in fairness to Grosvenor. They've been led very much with the three boys up top and they've they've been the boys who've hit the net for them. And that's it. The match is over. And look at the scenes here. 
the fans are on the pitch. <laughs> They're all running on. Um, I think all the toilet rolls and the toilets have been stripped. <laughs> and it's it's great to see. It's great to see from a Grosvenor point of view. It's a fantastic achievement for a, a school that has a, a long, long history of producing players for both here, international level and professional level. But you have to feel sorry for these lads in yellow. And they've done fantastically. They've, you can see them out here still wishing the wishing boys congratulations and it's great to see as well. Well, this is a wonderful sight. The uh, Grosvenor School Grosvenor Grammar School fans have emptied their stand. They're all on the pitch. And uh, what a what a great day it's been for them. In in a match where it's fair to say they've probably been outplayed in areas of the pitch, but yet have just yeah if looking was... at opportunity. Sorry, just looking at opportunities. You know. Even though they may have been outplayed, it has been Grosvenor who have had the majority of the opportunities. And that's it. And it, it's it's not a boxing match. It, it, it wouldn't have been st if it would have been stopped early for possession stats for for St. Combs. But that's not what it's about. Football is all about putting the putting the ball in the back of the net. And in fairness to Grosvenor, you have to respect as well. And the defending that they had throughout long portions of the game was fantastic. They put the body on the line, and it was great to see. And the defenders, they deserve as much credit as the three or four boys up top that have, that have got the goals and been the heroes. But it's brilliant and it shows you what it means to the school, it shows you what it means to the, the teachers to see the reaction here at the last whistle. Um, and fair play to them, two years in a row, it's some achievement. Well, they, uh, they've had a, a little wave bye-bye to, uh, to the St. Colin fans. There's a, a, a small coach load have come up. There's good luck to them, there's about 30 of them have, have made the journey over from Derry and of course it's uh, not so far for these guys who uh, I think they've all had a day off school most of them haven't they <laughs> what else it. can't get any better but it's, it's been a great day out for them and for the school it's a huge showcase for them and it, it shows the, the type of levels they put into football into sport in their school it's fantastic you can see the players going around here hugging coaches hugging teachers and that's what it's all about and they're in together and, and they've, they've done themselves proud and their families proud and their school proud well, we are going to stay for the presentation. Um, Dimmer, it's been wonderful having you on board. It's been great to uh, been talk pleasure. to you through this match. And uh, would have been nice if it was a bit warmer, but yeah. never mind. That's <laughs> it. Well, it kept us on our toes anyway. And uh, I'm sorry about extra time. I, I, that's, just, that's just what I bring to the occasion here. I was quite but... looking forward to penalties, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> the trophy is out. We will get the presentation. Dimmer, you have a great time. And uh, good luck to, uh, to yourself in the future for uh, all that your career brings. And... Uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing you again. We Thank might become a double act for schools football in Northern Ireland. <laughs> That's it. Thanks very much. Pleasure. You, you take care. Thank you very much.
So we're just getting ready for the presentation here. Demodor Carroll was absolutely wonderful on commentary. Great to hear his thoughts and views on what was a, a superb advert for schools football. And uh, well, the St. Column team, they're holding their heads in their hands around us. But they can certainly be proud of what they've done here today. They've really dominated a lot of the match here today in this final. But as Dermot said, the game is all about goals. So the St. Columns team get their runners up medals. Some uh, wonderful performances from so many players in that team. We're certainly going to see a lot more of these players in the future. They may have lost today, but the way they played, it was a great advert for schools football here in Northern Ireland. Sponsored by Danske Bank. What a wonderful view of this is. It's uh, fans all around the centre circle. So Grove de Grammar School retain the Danske Bank under 18 Schools Cup trophy. And there they all are on the left hand side just uh, getting ready for their photo. As the cup will be lifted in the air.
So the captain, Stuart Nelson. Well, they're getting mobbed by all the fans. <laughs> what an amazing sight. Stuart Nelson lifts the trophy. Grosvenor Grammar School win the Danske Bank Schools Cup for 2017. I do hope you've enjoyed this coverage here. The first, hopefully, of many, but certainly there'll be a lot of uh, memories for many years to come. There's probably people watch, watch this video in uh, many, many years' time. So it just remains for me to say uh, thank you for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. My name's Adrian Battersby. Thanks to Diarmuid O'Carroll, who came alongside with some expert analysis. And we hopefully will see you once more some stage in the future here for Northern Ireland Schools football action. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.